Welcome everyone to race two of round one. Oh god, I realize I'm putting myself on, 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 I can hear myself, that's really weird. Anyway, hi! Uh, welcome all, regardless of time zone. This is one hell of a race, and I'm joined here by Mocha, hello. Hey, Crisis, uh, how, how's everyone doing out there? I'm ready for this exciting race. You have, uh, Mr. Thomas Patrick, Mr. T. Pat, who just got, no, a sub three. Uh, I think you're gonna go over Tom's versus Fury versus JLF. And this is going to be an amazing race. I'm ready to see it. Oh, I'm w waiting to see. Waiting to see. For those who don't know, T-Pat just joined the sub one of five exclusive members in the sub three club, getting his PB of two hours, 59 minutes and 54 seconds, just scraping it in by six seconds. But that doesn't mean that we should leave our, comp our other competitors out of the dust. Forrest, who recently got himself a PB of 3 hours, 3 minutes and 39 seconds, so only 4 minutes behind. And of course, JLF, our newest runner, having a PB of, you know, 3 hours and 25 minutes, but anything can happen. So, you know, don't trust any of these, r don't let just PBs be like the final decider of what a race is going to be. Races can happen. Races... Things can happen. And believe me when I say things can happen. And believe Mocha when things can happen. Because things can happen. Yes, things can happen, such as um, an Archer 2 fight that could just go awry and just take your home run. But we'll, we'll talk about that later. So. We'll, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get to this. So right now, our runners have... Uh, they're doing their little setup. Every, every single racer has a minute of a countdown to set up, you know, their thing, make sure they have a, their timer set up for a very specific thing that's going to happen much later. But for now, I think we're almost ready to actually begin this race. Right, so just, just as a, you, you did see the date on, on t side, right? I did not. You're gonna have it to was a, It was a pretty nice date, let's just say that. Yes. So, we're getting finally getting started. Uh, our timer on the stream is not for some reason going, but you know what? We'll let that we'll let that slide. Uh, so this is of course Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, and uh, there's a lot of differences that happen between the two. Two of our runners are going to be running Eevee, whereas one of us are going to be uh, running Pikachu. Uh, I will be mostly talking about the Pikachu side of things because that is the only game that I run, and Moko will most likely be talking about the Eevee side as you probably run that more than I did. Which is, yes. if it's any number higher than zero, then the answer is you did. Um, <laughs> yes, that's currently what I'm running. Uh, I might I might slip into Pikachu later on in Attorney, but right now, Eevee's my main focus. As we, you no, know, just going through our setups, so like naming everything one because one, you know? It's, we name everything one simply because uh, we cannot be asked to uh, type any other thing, so we just press A and press plus and get ready to go. Just to note that one of our runners did pick Go One, so that person did lose seven frames in picking Go One. But you know, it's seven frames, so what does that matter? Much of the question mark this tournament, okay? So... That's me. I'm the yes. question mark. <laughs> That's because I did the smart thing and set up the keyboard so that it will be on symbols. That way, it will always be question mark when I do when I when I press it. That's how you get question mark consistently. Anyway, all of our runners are now doing the settings. We just turn tech speed to fast, battle effects off. I wish we can have Vanscar. Violet, battle styles are set. Wish we can have Vanscar and Violet. And movies off, which skips five movies. And one thing I will say about Scar and Violet being better, it does it automatically. Instead of yes. this game, we have to actually press the minus button, which sometimes I forget. Hey, even if you spam the minus button, sometimes it just starts a movie anyway, so. Again, no, you just Violet, Violet, yeah. The one button, the one button, for the one frame. So now we're moving into the main gimmick of this game, which, which is motion control throwing. We all love, we love motion controls. We love throwing stuff. We love throwing a lot of things: throwing balls, throwing runs. That's it. Those are the only just, two things. Just, I throw. just don't throw the game, okay? But <laughs> don't throw your switch out, okay? That's that's all we don't need. And also, don't throw the Joy-Con on your computer screen because we don't want anything to break and don't throw and don't go too hard on your joy cons unless we have the funny etchy moment yeah which right anyway, now we one important thing to note is that 
There's a value called CP. For Eevee, this doesn't matter, but for Pikachu, you can actually kind of have a little bit of an interesting indication of what nature you're in. With Pikachu, oh, that's a that's an interesting throw. Uh, for Pikachu, if the CP is 27, you know it's neutral. But because we know, but since I see it, it is a 26 CP Pika, it means the nature can be, it's going to be a, one nature is going to be plus and one nature is going to be minus. Hopefully it's not attack or minus attack. Please. Hey, Don't. We're seeing, see, what is it, uh, 15, 16 and attack and special attack respect, uh, respectively that we want to see? Uh, I, for Pika, yeah, for Pika, it's, at level 5, it's 14 in both attack and special attack. Okay. Us. For we'll Eevee, see. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, for Eevee, um, I'll, I don't know, at level 14 or level 5 to level 6, you want to see uh 15 and a 14. And also got to take into account speed for Eevee. Cause yes, Pikachu does Eevee? not have to worry about speed. Arguably, yeah. the best nature is minus speed, but we... But Eevee does have to mind about speed. It'll be interesting to see whether or not our runners will actually check the nature for their respective Eevee or Pikachu. Uh, I'm going to guess that T-Pat might, and I'm going to guess that Forest will not. Oh, T-Pat's I running away. I was one for two. runs away. I was one for two. So both of these players are YOLOing their Eevee, which does have a little bit of a risk, but they're going to have to take it as... JLF is checking the thing. It is sassy, which is completely fine. If I remember correctly, sassy is plus speed minus special defense. So plus speed is pretty much useless. Minus special defense can be um, yeah. interesting, but it's essentially, it's essentially a neutral for Pikachu. And now we have the dreaded route one first go through where you know Rattatus can just come out of nowhere and snipe you. Yeah, yeah. Sassy. I was gonna say I've had that. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry. But... Sassy is not. Wait, no, I'm sorry. Sassy is not. Was Sassy the opposite? Oh my god, am I... do I not know my natures? Hold on. I don't know my nature, so I'm googling I'm this. You. Hold on. Give me a second. I'm. I do not want to be spreading misinformation. Uh, that I am wrong. Sassy is plus special defense minus speed. So just take away that speed that Pikachu already has and still. So be there is one case where being minus speed is a bit bad. Uh, there it's specifically uh not Archer two, Archer one, where uh you can be. If you're if you're minus speed, you can be slower than the Golbat. But aside from that, uh, that's pretty much the only real like scary thing about minus speed. Whereas plus special defense, at being bulky, it's never really a bad thing. Yeah, we're about to see on these Pikachu's or not well on all of our mods, but these Eevee specifically if they are special or if they are plus neutral or minus attack because. Um, this first hit, this first tackle, the, these Eevees are going to do will tell us a whole lot. So if the Pikachu goes down to about half, it's more likely neutral or plus attack. If it does not go down to half, um, we have a minus attack Eevee on our hands. Yeah, I know one of our runners have, have has experience with, like, bad Eevees, but we'll see. So... Also, this is, again, Rival 1. Uh, you tackle and you hope that you just, you know, don't get paralyzed and don't get any, you know, bad stuff. And also, you hope you don't get growled. You want to just see Thundershock, no power, and just tackle. Yeah. You all have does have a least from D -pack that he is not minus attack, at the very least. And that's what we do. Same thing, except you just Thundershock. Typically, it's slightly this fight is slightly slower on the Pikachu side, as Pikachu tends to only be able to four shot, whereas Eevee has the potential to three shot. But that's just the nature of things. Now, we have seen a couple of minus attack uh, Eevees in this tourney already. Uh, one of them being mine, but I believe there's been a couple more since then. Uh, and we have another one now with uh, T-Pat. 
uh, running minus attack. No, he says he says minus attack. No, so I'm assuming that is not minus attack. Or, or minus attack. No, I don't want to see it. <laughs> no, it's, oh, wait. it's minus attack. It is minus. No, it attack. was minus attack. Oh, okay. So Tifa is definitely having now in a big disadvantage of running a minus attack. Uh, Eevee, which is you know not not ideal, but you know it could be worse. But a little fun thing to note is that in this fight, uh, you, Eevee does not get a level up here because it is missing one experience from doing so. Whereas Pikachu does actually get the level up here, and you can actually tell what the stats are for Pikachu. If uh, if you didn't check, this is will be the best place to check and reset a run if you have a minus attack Pika. But we know it's sassy, which is. Plus special defense minus speed. What nature did I confuse it with? I oh, I confused it naive. With That's only. why. I confused sassy and naive together. But we're about to see what exactly natures uh, these EVs do have after this uh, fight yeah. with the but character with this character because once we get this experience this one singular experience to level up this EV, we can see what the stats are. Yeah. Neutral nature is a 15, 15, 14, 17, 15. Awesome. Yeah. And even if we don't figure it out here, uh, or you don't know the numbers like I do, uh, the best way to figure out when it, you, what nature you are is when you learn the move double kick at level 10, which actually, now we can talk about it. Uh, we're going to be catching a lot of Pokemon here in this section because uh, one of the requirements of actually getting out of uh, of essentially being the game is uh, the one of the requirements of, game, of being the game is we need 50 Pokemon. And so, uh, as you can see, T Pack getting himself a Pikachu. Uh, we are going to need 50 Pokemon because Koga doesn't allow us it. So. But catching Pokemon is not just important for, you know, beating the game. It's also good for experience, as we need a good chunk of experience in the... Uh, it's a good, essentially a good chunk of experience in the early game to beat uh, a lot of gyms a lot, of, a lot easier. Especially when it comes to Misty's gym, which has a level requirement that we're not even allowed in until we reach level 15. But, of course... That's not the only requirements that we have. Like, even right now, Eevee has a soft requirement of making sure that you are at the very least level 10 before uh, entering Pewter, as we need to learn Double Kick by then. Yeah, and apparently, uh, these Eevees do have neutral attack. They just roll really low. Uh, they have minor special attack, which is something else you don't want to see. Again, we will be figuring out this we will be figuring out the uh, natures of this the mo we have pure confirmation of these natures by the time we get to uh by the time pikachu gets to level 10. not not pikachu eevee gets to level 10. so i will definitely be keeping my attention on both of these eevees when they reach level 10 to see what nature that they are so now we're going to get into, now uh, JLF is actually going to be the first to the law, and the reason why we're going to be using a law here is not only does the law increase the spawn rate of Pokemon, but also makes it so that every Pokemon that spawns with the law is the maximum level plus one. So every Pokemon that spawns in the law here will be level seven, which means less levels for the bugs, which are the best catch, well, some of the best catches in the early game to evolve as they count for three and not one. So here, all three of our runners are looking for bugs, specifically Weedle and Caterpie, so that they can then evolve into their two other evolutions. Yes, and they also need to be a lookout for grass Pokemon for their respective games. Uh, Eevee is looking out for Bellsprout, while uh, Pika is looking out for an Otters because they cannot get into Bronx Sim without one. Uh, Brock has a requirement of needing either a grass type or a water type to get into the gym. And there's no water types before here. So it's finding this grass Pokemon with JLF has found their Oddish. Yeah. 
So there are two places that you can consider getting yourself your grass Pokemon. You can either consider getting your grass Pokemon in the forest, which are level 7, or what we like to call Route 2 Roulette, where you try and see one of the four spawns and hope it's a grass type Pokemon, which is level 9 there, so you know. We also so. see some interesting decisions, the decision tree from a lot of these runners, because we also have a case of glowing Pokemon, which does give you more experience, as you can see with T-Pack getting himself a super-sized, I believe, Weedle that was. And we also get to see the confirmation of Eevee's nature, which is... Plus defense minus special attack. That is... Uh, da, 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 plus defense, minus special attack, impish. So, T Pats is plus defense, minus special attack, so that is going to be not fun when he uses his special moves, which we'll be talking about those later. We still have not got confirmation of what Forrest's uh, EV is yet, but we will figure that out at some point. Yes, and I believe uh, Furious is. Prob I don't know if they got their audit or their uh, their uh, bell sprout yet. So might be doing some uh, related yeah. here. Well, he's not gotten his grass type Pokemon yet, so he is going for Route Two Roulette. He didn't get it, but he did get a glowing rat. So that's at the very least interesting. So he is going for the Glowing Rat because it does give a good amount of experience, especially if it's supersized. And then he's probably hoping that the Brawl Sprout spawns afterwards. If not, he's going to have to reload the root, the root. But this is the perfect opportunity for us to figure out exactly what Eevee Burris is going to be working with. And believe me, I know he's ran bad Eevees before. What so speed minus special attack? Is... Yeah, plus speed might. So this is going to be a fast, but not so great e Eevee. So, this is going to be a little bit interesting for both of our runners. So, right now, t -Bat essentially has everything that he needs to now leave. Uh, to go to, you know, Brock's gym. Whereas... Burris still needs to find his required grass Pokemon. Because if he doesn't find his required grass Pokemon, he is going to... Well, he just can't continue. So, he is stuck until he finds uh, Bellsprout. And, well, he's right now stuck evolving things, but he'll be stuck there. Whereas, JLF, his tracker might be saying one, because I don't think he's actually uh, marked anything. Yet. So, but he has caught... He has caught like a bunch of bugs. I believe he's caught the bugs, and I believe he also has an Oddish. Yes, uh, JLF does have an Oddish, and it is in slot one. One thing that you'll notice about uh, Pika compared to Eevee is that Pika's going to need that Oddish just to take out Brock's gym. Yeah. So, first does not get his Bell Sprout, so he has to leave and refresh the room, which does have a little bit of a problem, and something we're going to mention is that right now, first is on a rat catch chain. So, rats have slightly more likelihood to appear compared to... Um... Compared to every other thing. So, there's the Bell Sprout. So, he wasn't punished too hard. So, he does find his... Pokemon, but it was a bit of a risk that he did have to take, which with the Bell Sprout to have a less chance of spawning. Not that unlikely, but still less likely. Well, that's a so the main strat of so the main strat between both our Pika runners and our Eevee and our Eevee runners is the Pokemon that we use to deal with Brock. So for Pikachu, we have Oddish, who's just going to. If you're low level, you use Growth plus Absorb. If you're high level, then you just spam Absorb and hope you just get to two one-shots. Whereas Eevee, it does require a little bit more setup. As sadly, Bellsprout does not have a special grass type move. It only has a physical grass type move. So... Yeah. So that's... So it that it has to be double kick, kick your dude, dude and then tail tail whip into two more more ducks.
Apparently we're robot. both robots. So we're Porygons then, right? I mean, I don't know, but I guess we're now going to be robots until uh, something gets fixed. I do not know w why we're robots, but you know what? If we're robots, we're robots. That that's it. So, T Fat first has now reached the gym. I believe T Fat just finished the gym, so Menopause is just going to be evolving. Uh, we're now getting into the first shop of the speedrun, which is essentially we're buying some Great Balls. We're going to be buying uh, some X items. Uh, for both runners, it's going to be one X attack and one X special. But with Pika, does buy an X defend because uh, guard menuing shenanigans. Uh, and then we also buy Antidotes. We buy Awakenings. And specifically, if you're Eevee, you buy a Burn Heal again. Specific again, uh, God menu shenanigans, which we'll talk about that a little bit later. We want to make sure that we have at least 500 Poké Dollars because we want to get the fastest catch in the game, and that requires us to pay 500 bucks. We're the cheapest catch in the game, also. Think about that. It is the cheapest catch in the game. That is also true. I mean, and the game bullies us in saying that it is. Oh, that's unfortunate. The, the game does bully us to, you know, saying, oh, it's such a bad catch. It's like, but it's, it's such a it's such a bad investment, but it's like, it's such a good one because it's just free. It's a free mod. Well, free in the sense of we don't have to swing our arms around and try and catch the Pokemon. It's just free. We like free. Yeah, and, and I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. 500 Poke Dollars since 1998 that is a steal in this economy oh yeah in, in the pokemon economy yeah 500 is a steal so both of our run all three of our runners are now he going to head into route three yes i, I think i know my counter route so i believe this is route three uh t-pat's gonna confirm for me yep it is route three i know i know my i, I definitely play kanto what, what gave that away? And we're going to be heading into uh, one of the major reset points for most runners, Mount Moon. Not the biggest reset point, but a very much big reset point. One thing to also note about this route is the fact that there are, of course, uh, version exclusive Pokemon. So we kind of seen this a little bit in Viridian Forest, but as t Patch shows case right now, uh, both games have version exclusive Pokemon that can appear in specific routes. In this one, Route 3 and Route 4, uh, Eevee can find Snek. Whereas in Pikachu, you can even find Sandshrew or Mankey. So Pikachu technically has the better case of version exclusive because there's more of them. But as we can see here, both T-Pat and Forest find a, find a Snek, which is really nice for their cash counts. And I just do want to remind that we do have a little bit of an issue with one of our runners' uh, catch count that it will be for a long time one. So if you do want to know what um, the catch count is, do try and ask and we'll try and respond to you as soon as possible. For now, we can say that JLF does have six right now and not one. Moving over, JLF is uh, going to the going into uh, Mount Moon, and in Mount Moon, I have oh that's unfortunate for Tipa. I wonder if Tipa is going to get actually this Geo dude. No, he's not. Yeah, it makes sense. So you want to wait until a little bit later. So here we have so here in Mount Moon, many people are gonna. The different strats between Pikachu and Eevee is that we're still going to be using Oddish for some of the fights here. And we're actually going to talk to the other trainer as well before we head into the Mount Moon. Into the cave where we get, you know, all our good spawns. Whereas Eevee will menu before this trainer so that we can learn a very powerful move in Stab Headbutt. Yeah, which Stab is, Headbutt. 
Yeah, headbutt is already a 70 power move. Stab, normal type, just you know, exponentially makes it even better. Plus yeah. gives it plus gives the chance to make the opposing Pokemon flinch, which just makes it even better. Yeah. So yeah. Do note that Pikachu does will run also headbutt as well, but he does not well Pikachu will not get the uh nice cities of stab headbutt, it would just be a, a normie headbutt instead. So coming into this area, we want to see three things spawn for all of our runners: uh, a rock, an angry rock with hands, uh, a mushroom, and a pink blob. Ideally, we want to see the small pink blob, but the other two bigger pink blobs are also fair enough, and most of our runners will probably go for those pink blobs if they see them. Maybe the the pink blob with the egg in it. Maybe we'll see one of them show up. It is, I believe from what I've heard, it's technically more optimal for that big pink blob of an egg to show up, at least an Eevee, to be later. Whereas with Pikachu, it is great to see it now. Because we can do fast strats on Misty. But again, because you cannot control that and because it's, uh, you know, luck and RNG and it's like a special spawn, which has like a very low chance of spawning in the first place. You just take what, whatever it gets. So right now, t is seeing, you know, a bunch of rocks. He's also seeing, you know... It does see a Glowing Paris, which I think we should just talk about Glowing Pokemon. Uh, glowing Pokemon are either super small, if it are uh, small, if it's blue, or red, if it's big. The only thing that matters from Glowing Pokemon is the fact that when caught, they do give us an extra amount of experience. That is an Onyx. On the screen. So let's see if uh, Forest is going to, you know decide to pick that up but i guess i should also say that rock's neck is also an option not a great option but it is an option would you rather see rock's neck here or in rock tunnel here 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 i need to make this very clear even though it's a one percent here and ten percent later here it is abysmal even though i have a 100 percent catch success chance with uh Rock Mount Rock Tunnel Onyx, uh, it is much better here, trust me. So uh, Fury's getting uh their bugs completed uh with this catch. Yep. And looks like uh JLF is as well. Uh, well not if... quite. Metapod is not quite there. Oh, yet. oh Metapod's not quite there yet. Yeah, well, Wait, did you potty man? I don't think I don't remember if JLF like fully potty managed before this menu. I think he just had the bugs and just had Magic Cop and be like. But if it's like if Magic Cops is can stay in the potty for a little bit, if your bugs haven't fully evolved yet, so. Yeah, you want to try and deposit more than one Pokemon per deposit just yeah. to economize your depositing. Yeah, so you don't want to deposit, you don't always want to just like just deposit one Pokemon. You kind of want to try and combine deposits just because, uh, but because you know, a little bit like because of menuing, like we want to try and reduce as many times we go into the menu because you know, menus are slow, but that's about it. Now, I do know that all our runners have picked up the Moonstone. I don't think any of our runners have gotten double Moonstone. T-Pat is leaving, which means, oh no, he's resetting the room. So he probably wants to find a pink thing. And I don't think he's getting that good luck, as Forrest is going for the Rock Snack. As t -Pat is leaving, he, just as a reminder, he does not have uh, Clefairy. He does not have Clefairy yet for... He, actually, none of our runners, I don't believe, have any pink things already, which is not great for all of our runners. Yeah, I'm thinking t -Pat might be saying, hey, I'll just hope I'll see it does have the a Clef in the cave, so he is one person to have it. And the main reason is that you actually do want to make sure that you are, again, level 15 before leaving this, before leaving uh, Mount Moon, because you need, you, that is a hard requirement. You need to be level 15. If you are not level 15, then you uh, do not get access to Misty's Gym. Uh, Forrest did see his pink thing spawn, so that is good for him. Uh, I'm still curious as to whether or not he's going to catch the Onyx. I know he doesn't have good luck with the Onyx, but it is a glowing Onyx, right? The amount of experience that you can get with a glowing Onyx is good. 
Yeah, especially if it's a super size pulling onyx, which you know just yeah. gets like a whole lot more experience than normal. But yeah, yeah. we we will see. Yeah, I'm a bit concerned for Teapot a little bit because uh, Teapot is only level 14. I don't think this is enough experience with just the fights alone to get to level 15. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, first, double does moonstone. get double moonstone. So yeah, so does opt not to. T-Pat finally gets his pink thing. It is an unlord Clefairy, so it's not going to give him as much experience, but it should be enough to guarantee him level 15 now. So, at the very least, he finally has his Clefairy to, you know, guarantee level 15, and they can both continue on, continue on with their speed runs. Like, and you just see, like, even just, like, Unlock Clefairy still gives, like, a good chunk of experience to a lot of his Mons. So now T-Pack can deposit his entire party and be fully content. In fact, the fact that he doesn't have a... actually already got Snake means that depositing here is actually not that bad of a play. Because you're not going to catch anything else. Unless uh, Rare Char um, uh, spawns, which, you know, is unlikely to... Oh, it's unlikely because it's a special spawn, but, you know, you never know. Oh, Furious with some jukes there, just hugging the wall to yeah. avoid that Zubat. Also, yeah, Forrest did not go for the Onyx. Decided not to risk it. Fair enough. Uh, we should probably explain. So, at least two of our three speedrunners decided to set up their timer to specifically roll over here. When you roll over the timer, uh, any item that you've picked up the day before has a 50% chance of respawning. And one of the items that we would like to respawn here is a double moonstone, is a moonstone, because if we get two moonstones, we can evolve uh, not one Pokemon, but two Pokemon that require moonstones. And we do attempt to catch all four Pokemon that evolve in the moonstone, uh, for Eevee, it's not really a requirement to... Eevee's actually... A, it's even seen some Eevee runners actually skip the Mount the Moonstone room entirely. Because, uh, you don't actually need... Ooh! Okay, so... Giant Pink Thing. Yeah, Giant Pink Thing. So, now with T-Pet, if he does catch this, he doesn't have to use his Moonstone on Clefairy. Not that you would, but in case you don't, you know, get yourself a... Oh yeah, it's not advisable because you are skipping the Nugget, but it is something that EV Runners can technically do because you don't really need the Moonstone, whereas for Pikachu, it is not a it is not it is a requirement to go down there because you do need one of the uh, Nidos to evolve. Anyway, t pack getting himself a big pink thing and now going to be rewarded with a bunch of experience. Well, okay, maybe not as much as I was expecting, but... A good amount of experience, and the fact that, you know, only Eevee and Bellsprout were in the party meant that nothing else useless got experience, which is really nice. Meanwhile, first, you know, both first and t pet being extremely neck and neck with each other, heading into the nerd fight. Uh, this fight is pretty simple in Eevee, you just headbutt and then double kick. Uh, with JLF, headbutt can be, doesn't, won't, won't guarantee the one at KO, and also being level 14, depending on his attack stat, double kick could still potentially be a range. So Looks let's like hope we'll and down. Furious are both through this fight. Uh, looks like JLF is as well. Good job. Uh, head to our first J Jesse and James fight, which did you yeah. know is one controller? Yeah, so we say this a lot, but main, many most fights where we do 2v1s, it's going to be, we use the second controller for our, you know, menuing and our movement of, you know, the Pokemon. But with J and J, we only use 1p it does get confusing a little bit with when when you especially when you're learning the game this is just all done on player on the player one controller but this fight is pretty simple in both versions eevee you x attack and you headbutt 
and you win, and Pikachu, you X special, you Thundershock, and you attempt to win. I will probably say that Eevee might have the better version of this fight. And then Bellsprout, you know, kind of just chills there and does damage occasionally. Yeah, because that pet blood is a thing. And can definitely take these out. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we do use an X attack for Eevee on this fight. Yeah, X attack Eevee and X special attack Pikachu. It's funny because the Misty fight, it's the opposite way around. Pikachu, Eevee, X specials, Pikachu, X attacks. And so coming out out of Mount Moon, I mean, just to say, Tipa and, and Forest are very neck and neck with each other. Not just in where they are, but also in catch counts. Yes, and we'll they see. They both have 15 them, port. They are skipping the PP up, so they are saying, hey, I'm good with how much uh, Okadars I'm going to have. I'm just going, oh, t -Pack does on verse and get the Great Balls. Yeah, t -Pack goes for Great Balls. Forest does skip them, which... Is, is is just interesting. It is more of a safety thing, and also t -Pat does need to do this extra menu of depositing Clefable because it's just more optimal. And now we get into uh, the special moves. So Eevee learns three special moves here are based on the evolutions of the Kanto evolutions. So we have the special type, the special... Um, so we have Bouncy Bubble, which is a 90, 90 base power special type move, which heals 50% of their damage. Uh, Buzzy Buzz, a 90 base power special attack, which pra which auto paralyzes the opponent's Pokemon. And we have a Sizzly Slide, which is a 90 type ba 90 base power fire type physical move, which always burns the opponent. So it's going to be. So these moves are going to be utilized for both their primary effects of just dealing damage as well as their secondary effects as well. Just a FYI as of right now, JLF did catch one of his uh, Pika exclusive uh, Mons being of course uh, Mankey, which is really nice to see. And when Pikachu gets to the move, Pikachu only learns one move, but that's because it yeah. only needs one. It doesn't uh. need four moves like Eevee. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll stop. Hey, this one. okay, coverage. <laughs> Eevee I'll can just take care of half the game just by coverage alone, okay? Yeah. But Pikachu still does learn an incredibly powerful move in Zippy Zap, which is a 50 base power physical type move, which not only has plus two in priority, but it always crits, which is really nice. But we do have to note that both of these runners do have minor special attack, which is, a, you know, a bit of a. Uh, not great. I believe we both have special attack. We did say this, and then now I've forgotten what natures they are. So, yeah. So, both of our runner, so both of our Eevee and our Pikachu, both of our Eevee runners are now approaching Misty, and the main strap for this fight is pretty cool. Uh, you use... So we use the next special attack on turn one against the Psyduck, and then on turn two we take a hit from Mist we take a hit from Misty, use Buzzy Buzz to then paralyze the Stami, which then makes the Stami lower than the slower than our EV, and then turn two we then take the EV take the Stami out without taking damage. Ideally, it does have a move. We do not we do not want to see the thirty percent chance, but again, it is a thirty percent chance, so it is likely. That the secondary effect of the move and keep an eye on Starmie. We might be seeing it later. Yeah, okay. Uh Sawave use on Yuri's uh Eevee. And so we didn't see the move that can have this secondary sass effects. Uh, Sidewave is actually kind of rare, and it's also probably scarier, actually, because it because Sidewave is just a move that does random base power. It could be as low as 20 and as high as you know. Uh, 120. From if I were if I'm aware of the move. Looks like both uh, T Pat and Fury are through their Misty fights. As yeah. uh, uh, JLF sends his uh, sends their Pikachu out to uh, to Zippy Zap it. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention to Pikachu's attack stat. Depending on Pikachu's attack stat, it is a range. 
to KO the Starmie. I'm not quite sure what the... Oh, it's 100%. Never mind. So yeah, you, so yeah. If your attack is bad or you don't get enough attack AVs, you can be... A, it can be a range and it can be scary. And of course, the safety strat, if it is a range, is to always summon the second controller. Because you can summon the second controller in any fight you want. It is slower to do so. But if you want to play it safe... Oh, it's 41. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, that's a completely fine attack. That's actually a pretty good attack. And you got crit on top of that as well. But... Well, Zippy Zap <laughs> always crits. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, both of our EV runners are attend are going to do Rival 2. Yeah, yes, it is Rival 2. Uh, technically, it's Rival 3 because there's an optional Rival, but we don't count that, so it's Rival 2. Uh, this yeah. fight is pretty simple. It's... Uh, Headbutt the Pidgey, use the super effect, or, or, or Buzzy Buzz, depending on your attack stat. Uh, essentially, use a super effective move until you see the Pikachu, and then just headbutt it. If you want to save super effective text, you can technically headbutt the Pidgey, but it depends on your attack stat. Pikachu, similar thing, you knock out the Pidgey, you then headbutt the Oddish, hoping for a flinch. You really do not want to see Poison Powder. And then you double kick the Pikachu or Zippy Zap the Pikachu, depending on, you know, wh how good your attack stat is. And I believe 41 is good enough that you can Zippy Zap the Eevee, no problem. And then we get to everyone's favorite part of the game, which is called Nugget Bridge. So this is, of course, a time where if you want, you can obviously post your, your copy pastas onto the Twitch chat. And we will read them out if they are, you know, TOS or, you know, TOS appropriate. But in the meantime, during this, I would like to s probably talk a little bit about how this tournament structure actually works. Most of, all of us are participating in uh, essentially what we do, is what is called Swiss rounds. So every round that we face from after this round, we are going to be playing against players who have a similar win to loss record. So going to so going into the next round, everyone who has three match points, so whoever wins, will play again, will be pool will be in a will be uh, matched against each other. And anyone who has who loses the race, aka zero match points, will also be raced against each other. This means that next week we're going to have races that are much, much closer in terms of in terms of skill express in terms of skills and showcases. For those who get second place in their races, they will either get one or two points, depending on if their time is better than the medium of all the races. From at least from what I believe. So, and the two points, pe the two people who get two points will be matched against each other, and the people who get one point will be matched against each other. This will continue until the final round after four rounds, where the top nine players will then go into a single elimination tournament and could be for the finals, which does have a prize pool, which I forgot what it was. So that's how this tournament works. And hopefully that was enough time for now. Have some people post some copy pass. Uh, don't wait. We do actually have the prize pools. I actually now finally got the place for the prize pools. Currently, if I'm not mistaken. So the prize pool right now is, of course, is right now at four hundred and twenty-two at four hundred and sixty-nine dollars. Nice. First place will be getting. $234.50. Second place will get $140.70. And third place will get $46.90. Again. Nice. Okay. Of course, if you want to this thing not to be nice anymore, you can always contribute your own money. And of course, this will go towards the top three. Uh, to, to, of course, the top three runners. I'm saying so it's a good time to talk about the prize pool on Nugget Bridge as soon as we get the Nugget. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think I've planned this? <laughs> like, you know, it's, Nugget it's Bridge. Like you have it, it's like you haven't already like decided this beforehand, right? It's it's almost as if Nugget Bridge has nothing going on, and we have to think of something to put it in. So you know what? I'm going to get I'm going to get the whole tournament structure. I'm going to get the prize pools, and we're going to do it. Now we also have some. Copy pastas, uh, Go Power is not real. 
I'm sorry. And uh, the 30 catching is apparently a lot. Come on, can you guys not make any new ones? Maybe we'll get something whenever we go to the hot out or if we go to it, like to someone make my you know someone make like a hideout one like yeah a hideout oh you know what okay make a what is it make a archer two copy pasta that's what you should do <laughs> yeah cause we'll, we'll get, I, we'll get I, I know what you can about archer two you know yeah. We'll, we'll get there. We're not there yet, but you know. So all of our trainers, you know, are doing this, doing the skips. Do no, no, I say skips? There's one skip that you can go for. It is free, if you know, if you can practice. And but none of our runners decided to go for it. It does save one second, but if you do hit the trainer, it is a pretty rough, especially for Pikachu. It is a pretty rough trainer. Oh, I'll let you read what Sandy just put in chat. That's a pretty good one. I seriously like the parts out the bad parts of it. It is not. Yeah. So as we continue on, uh, we're going to see Bill doing his sign stuff again. You can before, you, you can take this, this out of Bill. context as much as you like, but do it in your own time. In before uh, this Bill. Jellyfish is actually going to go for the Venonat, which is an interesting choice. Technically not a required catch at all, but it has spawned for some of our runners, but it's not really a... It's kind of like a debatable catch of whether or not you should or shouldn't go for it. Venonat can be a bit annoying as he just like to go from side to side. I know this from experience, even there's a moment in Indigo Disc where the Venonat is going to side to side and you have to specifically t press the eyes and it just sometimes even dances around and is like, I want to menu the eyes, please, thank you. So, is again, I guess he, because he had a Pokemon in his posse, he did choose to, uh, break, catch the Venonat simply because he could then be put back two instead of one, which, you know, respectable choice, but you know. It is a choice, it is of course an interesting choice, does get the skips, which is really nice. And because this is Pikachu version, you do need to pick up his ether. Again, there are some god menuing shenanigans. Essentially, I guess this is now a good time to explain it. Later on, we're going to be buying items to set up something called a god menu. This means that with just one input, we can get to X attacks and X special attacks, which is really, really nice. Uh, using any of those items a little early can mess up god menu, so we do have to be a bit careful about that. Uh, quiet, everyone. My favorite show is on. Okay, gotta watch uh, the Take the BB because that's all the case. Oh, we have we have now a new cop a new copy quest. Let's go. Any percent NMS? More like Archer two percent NMS. The fastest Archer two fight is a waste of one minute forty six seconds of your life, and every time Cubo misses a bo boomerang and Cele Celebi dies. And even if you get the perfect self-destruct, no protect, you still have Sucker Punch to worry about. This run is a joke that hinges on one fight. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> so we finally get past Nugget Bridge, and now we get into... For Pikachu, a very important catching route. For Eevee... Kinda important, so... Yeah, you can probably get away with just one catch. Yeah, so if Eevee, you just want to be level 18 before you leave. That's really it. Whereas for Pikachu, uh, you don't really need to be a specific level. But what you need to be is you need to be... You need to catch a specific Pokemon. And that Pokemon is called a Pupper. Well, it's called Growlithe, but it's a Pupper. And we want to see that puppy spawn. But Crisis, what about an Abra? Can we not also catch that on this route for Pika? You can... But not only is that like a 5%, I believe, but also you have to make sure that you're, fa you're not facing the wrong way because if it looks at you, it'll just teleport. Not to mention, you also need to make sure that it levels up at least once so that you can actually use it in the fight. Not to mention that Growlithe is a fantastic backup in case a certain Pokemon later doesn't spawn, which 
uh, one of our runners had that and had to walk the entire way. So yeah, so Rock Tunnel's finest there. Rock Tunnel's it's finest, not... aka the uh, second point, second reset point of most runners. But we'll get to that when we get. We'll get to that when we get to that. Right now, both Tipa and Forest are picking up items. Um, they're specifically picking up the Nugget and the Law here. Uh, the Law is obviously going to make sure that all our Pokemon are spawned up. And the Nugget is because we need money because we're going to do our second shop after we're done with this catching. We'll explain a little bit more about the second shop, but right now both of our runners are going to be going up and picking up this rare candy. This is so that the root actually has enough time to spawn all the Pokemon in the root. And ideally for Eevee you want to see- oh that's a Chansey! That, that, that's going to be a lot of ex interesting experience for Forest. Let's, let's hope he catches it and- but the main Pokemon that you want to see here is Vulpix if you're Eevee, Ralph if you're Pikachu, Abra if you're lucky, Chansey if you're really lucky, and uh, sometimes you can consider Pidgey. Snorlax is not really something that you want to see. So before that, let's hope that this Chansey gets in. Wait, it is Snorlax not favorable. Here? It's favorable. Uh, ah, nice. So that's going to be a good chunk of experience for Forest. Going into Snorlax in this route. Yeah. I've never seen one. I didn't say Snorlax. Oh, but he's 21 now. That's wow. uh. That He's like is... three levels away from learning uh, a really powerful normal type move in Double Edge. But we'll get to that. So, really, Vulpix is like the only thing you need to see. Uh, Pidgey, you can consider catching it here, but this does lock you out of Pidgeot later. And. Oh, Double Edge is 28. I'm, yeah, I, Double I, Edge I is 28. Can you tell that I run Eevee? Does it, is it obvious that I don't run Eevee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got, yeah, you got so, Eevee, right? You, you totally got Eevee. Yeah, so... Anyway, so yeah. So now, Forrest is now catching a Vulpix. Uh, I forgot to mention that uh, the other important Pokemon you want to catch here is also a Jigglypuff, if you see it. None of our Eevee runners actually actually seen a Jigglypuff. Ideally, you want to see a Jigglypuff, as it's actually the best Moonstone Evo for... Pikachu, for Eevee, because it's uh, the only Moonstone Evo that doesn't learn a move on level up. But... If you don't, you still have other options, and obviously you have the way back to catch yourself a Jigglypuff. So, yeah, so we'll, so right now we're going to hope to see that, you know, JLF gets uh, the Growlithe, and obviously I should mention this nice spinner pass from Teapot and Forest. No, not spinner yep. pass, uh, Cerulean, no, Vermilion Skip, there we go. Let's say Furious also having to juke the, the Skip there because the... Uh... Yeah. The full pigs was in the way. So. As JLF does find the P thing on the path. So. JLF does find Jigglypuff. Ideally, you want to catch this after the Growlithe, but sometimes you just can't do anything. And now we just hope and pray that Growlithe spawns. As Tipa and Forrest did their shopping menu, they are selling all the Pokeballs, buying Great Balls. And buying all the X items that we're going to be using for the majority of the mid game. And we're heading our way to fight Rival 3. But Rival. Or Ooh, there's a, a, oh, 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 that's a, oh. a, a bit of an awkward spot for the, for the Papa to spawn, but hey, at least better late than never. Almost in front of that gentleman there, but luckily... Uh, uh yes, he's not in front of a gentleman, so it's not gonna happen. He just makes sure that he doesn't... He doesn't walk directly down. It is very important that he doesn't walk directly down. Hold up. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know what? Just for sake... Oh, uh, actually, no. He Where he is... Hold... Left. Should be fine. So, T-Pad going to Rival 2. Uh, this fight's pretty simple. Uh, you X special, Buzzy Buzz, the Pidgeot, turn 1. Ideally, you're not too slow. Um, and then you then use X the and Buzzy Buzz, and then... Ooh, that's a ooh, shame. That's, yeah. Jailer. The good news is that he doesn't need to do the skip on the way back up. As long as he goes more towards the right... He won't have to deal with 
doing the skip on the way up, which is at least a nice thing. Charmander, it's fine. You just zippy zap twice and you're fine. Yeah, oh, just once. That works too. So we're gonna X attack headbutt here for T-Pat. And then going... Oh! Ooh, that's yeah. kind of cool. Low rolls on this headbutt. I mean... It's not the end of the world. They should have a sissy slot here. Didn't realize that was a uh, range, but you know what? That's a range. But now, here comes the second coming of Crazy. AKA Mount uh, Rock Tunnel. Yeah, right you see, after yeah. we learn Cutty Cut. Right? After we learn Cutty Cut, we're about to go into where most runs go. Oh, yeah, T Pat. Oh, yeah, you're, you are minus attack. T Pat's not minus attack. T Pat's EV just thinks it has minus no, attack. No, you're, you're, T Pat, you're not minus attack, though. No, the EV thinks it is minus attack, though. Even though it's not. Wait, hold on. No, I'm check. I'm double checking this now. I'm going. I'm going to the vault. I'm checking. I'm checking. You, you, you commented. I'm checking. All right. So uh, JLF is in the shop, <laughs> uh, buying the Pikachu specific menu as uh, we are learning Cutty Cut on T Pass side and finish not rival, boat rival or Fury, and uh, so far it's like everyone's in the same spot. Roundabout. Yeah, uh, I want to say that T Pat's, both T Pat and Fury both have on a special attack EVs. I'm pretty sure they did, but I'm double checking. But the roles that, uh, the roles that, you no, know, both of our runners have makes EV look like a special bonus attack. I probably just didn't get a single AV in attack. That's probably what happened. So now the hardest part of Vermillion Skip is going up to get Vermillion Skip. That's easier. You... I'm. I will glad. I will 100% debate you on this. It is easier. All right, come on. I will debate right now. You line yourself up Go. with a line. You hold up. You're fine. You line yourself up with the grass. You go down. Oh, there it Ooh, is. Ooh, T-Pat gets an Abra. That's a nice catch for him. Uh, anyway, uh, T-Pat, you are. You are, uh, what is his nature? You are minus special attack plus defense. That is your nature. You are not minus attack. Why is it? Eevee thinks it's minus attack. It thinks it's roll. minus attack, but he is impish. Uh, we know that JLF is sassy. I remember that, but that's not really going to come much into play. And I remember also... I just had your oh, thing. Pink Hold thing. On. You had a pink yeah. thing for T-Pad. Wait. Oh, that's actually a nice thing to see because that is the best moon zone, Evo. Yeah, plus defense, minus special attack. That is what you are, yeah. That is your nature, T-Pad. Do not say you are minus attack again. <laughs> we will call you out on it. Yeah, the next time, uh, headbutt. No, Actually, I think they, both of our runners are minus special attack. They are not both minus special attack. Fury has plus speed. Oh yeah, that is right. So I think, yeah, Forest de definitely has the better of the two bad natures. Absolutely. So both Tipa and Forest are going back to, um. Ceruleans, that way we can go to route 3 up, route, no, route 10, was it 9? Route X. Um, I think it's 9. Where we are doing the mini, we're going to evolve the pink thing, because we have a pink thing that we can evolve. Um, typically, we want to see that Jigglypuff uh, evolved here, and also yeah. Lure. Yeah. So, Eevee does this menu now, because... Actually, why do you do this menu now? I know Pikachu does it later. Uh, Eevee does this menu now to evolve. The, the I guess it's to also party manage before 
Yes. Uh, uh, so that the tr so you don't get any extra experience. Pikachu does it later because we don't want the Growlithe to get too much experience, but we still need the Growlithe for the next few fights. So we delay our menuing a little bit just so that we can have Growlithe in our party and then deposit it later. I remember now. I just had to, you know, remember ourselves. But coming up is going to be uh, th this fight against the Picnic, uh, whatever her name is. Uh, for Eevee, you kind of have to guard spec turn one because this thing does have sand attack. And then you just, um, I believe you use the next item here as well. Yes, maybe? we use uh, sand attack, or we use guard spec, uh, X attack, and then headbutt. Yeah, that makes sense. Pikachu will actually do every single one of these fights to players and using a combination of Pikachu and Growlithe to take care of all the upcoming threats. And then this fight, uh, Eevee has a much simpler time. I don't believe you X special here. No, you just go straight for the bouncy bubble. Yeah, that makes more, a lot more sense because uh, Sand Shrew does have both Poison Sting and... Oh, it also has Dig. It has Dig, which is scary for Pikachu. And then Raticate, I, I think this is, this can be a yeah. bit scary. Yeah, if, with the way the attacks have been for these Eevees, uh, doing a bite or a, uh, a buzzy buzz and then headbutting would be great just to get the, um, get the, where you are just, you know, faster than a Raticate. But you can just go spam headbutting if you want to. Yeah, there are different ways of doing some of these fights. First, now reaching the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, Route 10. Oh, well, yeah, well, yeah, Route 10. And we are oh, here to see a few things. We not need, necessarily need to re-know, but we want to see Nidoran male, Nidoran female, uh, Spiro, Krabby, and if you don't have Ratat Ratata, you also, you want to see Raticate because it's a very good amount of experience. So far, Farfar is not exactly the best uh, encounters. He does already have a rat, so he's not going to go for that rat. And I believe Eevee does buy a repel, if I'm not mistaken. So this yes. could be a consideration of repelling here. This is like the big catching section of the run, and we are hoping to see for every one of our runners all the encounters required. We want to kind of leave Mount Moon. No, not Mount Moon. Rock Tunnel. With around 30 encounters, 30 catches, ideally, or at least like somewhere near that area. 28 with some evolutions is fine. Ooh, that's an interesting spinner pass from, from T Pat. Uh, by the way, uh, with most, if not all, spinners, it is your fault if you get hit by one. Yeah. There are um, very few spinner, Spinners have weird vision, and even if you're past it, they can still catch you. Which I have no experience with whatsoever. Yeah. And I'm just saying. So, as I mentioned, those are the Pokemon. Uh, Venitos are planned. Spiro is planned. The uh, Raticate is planned. Uh, Krabby is the only one of the four that own of the five Pokemon that I mentioned that is not exactly planned. Yeah. Uh, Bell's about just got one more level up Ooh. there, then you would have been able to boss up both uh, Weeping Bell and Kadabra, but that is sadly not the case. Krabby is, uh, was it? I don't think it's 4%. I think it's a bit higher than that. But it's a rare spawn on this round. Yeah, it is a special spawn. And, uh, yeah. First, not getting. Like, I think you just got Nidoran, Nidorino, Nidoran male, Nidoran female, and that's it. So, a bit on the low side, but he did. I, he, he's the only one. He's the only runner that got double Moonstone. So, at least he has, at least, like, three more Pokemon still in the queue of it'll eventually come just not right now oh wait no he didn't get jigglypuff so he can actually evolve both of them yes uh, so there's he does a chance have, like, that you can get jigglypuff on the way to zeladon but yeah, I, I don't think you risk that, it though uh yeah you don't risk it yeah so you do have two moonstones you can just evolve whenever they you know get enough experience to evolve and but none but even though those pokemon are extremely important to get None matters more than the Pokemon inside Rock Tunnel. And inside Rock Tunnel is the most important Pokemon for Eevee to get. 
Because man, you will lose a lot of time if you don't. And that is called Rhyhorn. Rhyhorn is... In this, po in this game, there's no bicycle. Instead, you ride Pokemon instead. And Rhyhorn has, at least at this point in the game, faster movement speed than any other of the right Pokemon that we mentioned, so we really want to see it, ideally as early as possible. Not to mention in Eevee, you do use Rhyhorn uh, for some of the fights, so it is kind of a requirement. There are of course other strats with like Graveler and Self-Destruct and all that, but more the most important thing is seeing that Rhyhorn. So we're hoping for all of our runners that we see Rhyhorn as soon as possible. Again, uh, let's be honest though. Will we see boot, boom strats from from these runners today? No, I, I doubt it. That, uh, that's more of a T-Pat and those are very high up there. We will probably not see boom strats for Eevee, and Pikachu never goes for boom strats anyway. Uh, has boom strats would be KLF gotten a Nido? I yeah, he's got a Nido near rank, so. Pikachu does have to go for Nido strats, and the main reason why Pikachu has to go for Nido strats is because it just can't deal with things by itself, and so it does need some help. And typically, Nido ran male is better than Nido ran female, uh, for most fights except one. Uh, so ideally, we'll get Nido ran male instead of Nido ran female. So T Pat is going for this uh, Nido Rena. Which is, you know, not necessarily a bad idea, because especially if a, you know, Nido ran female doesn't spawn, then, well, you kind of limited in your options. Uh, so you do see JLF go. Yeah, we do see JLF go for a uh, root refresh, which is interesting. Ah, he was looking for Nido ran male. Got it. That makes a lot more sense. And. So yeah, only uh, Forrest has gotten through. He He's the one that caught the least amount of Pokemon in Route 10. So he's the one that needs to get the most amount of Pokemon to spawn in Rock Tunnel. If not, we are going to have... We might have to go for some interesting catches later, such as... Oh, Magmar? Magmar catch? Well, maybe. It depends on, like, you know, the catch route. The catch route for these for these things and what encounters do people get here a zubat's also zubat's very so in the cave in rock tunnel we want to get ourselves uh zubat if we haven't got it already we want to get cubone machop we also want to get rhyhorn for ex for riding graveler for experience and i think that's it i think that's the only five you want if you see Rare Char, you get it. If you see Rare Char, you can try and go for it. Ideally, you want to get the Ultra Balls first, but if you don't, you can go for it. And Pokemon that you should probably never go for are Golbat. Uh, what else? Kangaskhan. Uh, Kangaskhan. You probably shouldn't go for that. And Onyx. You should never go for that. Do not trust my track record. We have seen some Kangaskhans this, this uh tournament already so we will see yeah so Forrest now getting his graveler which is you know really nice to see uh like i said he is missing a lot of pokemon from route 10 so he does need a lot of pokemon to spawn here like only getting two is not ideal you ideally want to get like a lot more than just two pokemon in in the five possible from route 10 but again only four Pokemon can spawn there, so you kind of have to hope that the game is nice enough. So t -Pat leaving. I believe t -Pat got everything except Krabby. Yeah, I believe so. And uh, so t -Pat's heading into Rock Tunnel. Uh, yep. Significantly ahead of Catches. Well, I say significantly. Like um, one ahead, he... but again, there's like a lot of things that can go. Uh, getting early Zubat, that's actually pretty good. You can get Zubat, Zubat gets experience, and Zubat then uh, leaves. Which is, you know, nice. And you don't really care about getting like stuff like an excellent or a perfect on this. Third. Oh, there's a right horn for Furrus, so he gets his right horn. You yeah, see, back, the, the Furrus get their Graveler as well because there's a They've already got their Graveler, sadly. Okay. So we cannot go for the glowing one. 
Well, I mean, they can, but it's not. It is. No. Do not double up catches. I mean, you nothing is technically stopping you from doubling up on catches, except for the fact that you're going to be losing 30 seconds for doing so. At least. So, we'll probably be seeing a menu from T-Pad here, because I think everything can be deposited, except for, like, the mid shop. I don't know, so first, furious, because bro. he has to also withdraw the, uh, the, 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 the right horn so that he can then ride it, so... We're hoping to see, so, room two, right horn, you know, not that bad. Not, I, I, ideally you want to see room one, but room two, not that bad. But trainer fights here aren't that scary. I think, like, Pikachu has, like, one somewhat scary fight with the right horn, if, especially if you're minus attack. But aside from that, it's just click the button and you're good. Now, this cause is not very up on Pika. When is the optimal time for you to get your uh your Nido royalty uh out? When's wait, sorry, can you repeat that question? When is the optimal time to get your Nido royalty out? So your Nido King, Nido Queen, when when do you want that before the exit run? So you need to evolve the Nido before rival. So really at any point, so really you want to combine it with like depositing is when the is the most optimal time to evolve. So because Nido already learns the two, already has the two moves that he needs, which is, or they, or she needs, depending on which you know you have being poison jab or crunch plus helping hand. So you really just, so you really just evolve it when you need to, when you get, uh, when you get the a chance to, you know, combine the menus. So typically it tends to be during Rhyhorn, when it's like when you have to party manage Rhyhorn back into the party, is when you do things. The only thing to keep in mind is you need to make sure that before the hiker fight, the one that has the Rhyhorn, you need to make sure that Nido is in slot two. That's the only like other requirement. So maybe before that fight might also be a case, but depending on how the previous route goes, that's when you maybe have it already in slot 2. And sometimes even before Route 10, even before entering Rock Tunnel, uh, you get, um, uh, you just get a, uh, you just have this opportune moment to just Moonstone before you even enter the tunnel. So it is a bit, uh, complex, it is a bit more complicated than, um, I mean, it, I, I'm saying it's a bit complicated, but it, it's just whenever is most optimal is when you evolve it, is what I'm trying to say. T-Pat's oh. still walking, still looking for his right horn. That's an onyx, but that, yeah. I do believe that is a right horn after the onyx. Catch the onyx, so. I dare you. No, he's, 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 he's not mad enough. Oh, no, no that was not. That was or, not shock you more so, the job, yeah. Yeah. Small thing. Small they thing that's hard to see. It. I mean, how can you see these things? It's so dark in there. Right? How do these runners know what's different? Even we wearing glasses, it's so difficult to see. If only there is like some kind of move called flashy flashes up out of the cave. Yeah, it's a bit too far out of the way though. And when we buy a bit too far out of the way, we have to go back to can't to, to can't to like Vir near Viridian Forest, and it's like yeah. through Diglett's tunnel, and it's like no. As someone who who first played through this game with speedrun notes, like what are you talking about? So we see uh, Jalif uh, JLF does get his um, right horn in the second room. So only T Pat missing his right horn. That is that Rachel. On t pads screen, or am I just going crazy? I think so. Uh, we will see after this. Uh, oh, it is red shot. He's fight. not going, for, but he do, he says he doesn't need it. And I'm saying to him, go get it anyway. Yeah, it's red shot. It's not every day that you see a red shot, hence the name. Here uh, he having to uh, repel just to pass through here. But I think Fury's I, also got everything they need. No, yeah, no. I think Fury just has everything, so he doesn't need 
to have the encounters up, so he's just gonna repel anyway. I think he has everything. Cubone, he has Machop, he has Zubat, he has Rhyhorn Angry, yeah, he has everything. So, yeah. he does not need to get anything. So, he can actually fully repel oh, there's thing. and there's the Rhyhorn after the gra I believe that's a Rhyhorn. If I, I am think hoping so. I think that is a Rhyhorn. I'm hoping it is, for T-Pat's sake. Because it'd be pretty annoying if he goes out, if he doesn't get a Rhyhorn, because... I actually know if he's ever done no Rhyhorn strats before. He probably has. But it'll be hey, interesting yeah, to see. Got the, got the Graveler, so can replace Graveler if that is indeed not a Rhyhorn, and just a really, really small Pegasus card. Oh, he did last turn. Okay. So... So, yeah, so... Now that he has his ride horn, he now has his ride. And while he may look like he's a little bit behind from Forest, uh, he does have more catches. He's at 32, which is really good at this point. Uh, th again, 30 is like the rough line you want to leave, and anything higher than 30 is just fantastic. Because it means that you don't have to go for catch catches later on, such as Magma, Tangler, Ditto. Uh, EV, if you're running Pikachu. So we don't want to go for those. But yes, that is a Rhyhorn. It's what? This is like, what, the fourth room Rhyhorn? So it's a bit slow, but eh, it could be worse. It could be no Rhyhorn. So all of our runners having Rhyhorn, so we are blessed by that moment, but again, a lot of things can happen. We haven't seen a Genghis Khan yet, so we could be blessed with Genghis Khan before we get there. Just I, to see we probably it. Just won't to see, it. see it from first, because again, he has the repel up. Uh, we could still see it from both of our other runners. I will tell them that please don't. Don't. It's like, it's tempting, just don't. So yeah, this is, yeah, so T-Pad doing his menu here making a lot makes a lot of sense. And yeah, so the even same thing with Rock Snack. If you see a Rock Snack, do not go for it. Like even e I have a 100% catch rate on this thing, but it is not recommended at all. Trust me. It's like what if you manage to get, what, double great nice, it's less than a 50-50 coin flip. Or just about a 50-50 coin flip. Just to get it Prices, in. can't that be a ride Pokemon if you don't find a Rawhorn? It, okay, you can ride the giant rock snack. It's just not as fast as Rhyhorn. It, it, it's it like unfortunately little, speed? Unfortunately, he, according to game logic, he's not fast. Faster than Rhyhorn. Apparently, it's not riding Onyx is actually just not even faster than just walking. Like that, walking is faster than riding an Onyx. So, don't ride Onyx unless you're memeing, in which case, ride Onyx. Yeah, no, if we're memeing, I want to see someone ride a star. Okay, if we're talking about memeing, someone's riding a star. I mean, okay, that's a meme, but that's not like a meme. You know, it's not like. It's like, yeah, you can ride a star, but it's like, you can just... You're always gonna catch the star. When it's riding Onyx, you have to go out of your way to ride an Onyx. To get an Onyx. And then you have to go out of your way even for, even more to then ride an Onyx. Like, I know now any percent, like, the pure any percent, though, category that we're not running here, actually does ride star. But, again, riding star... Does get some swag points. Riding Onyx gets the most amount of swag. Gets a lot more swag points. Riding Kangaskhan gets the the the, the toppest tier of um of swag points. So if you're so competing for swag points, I will ride concede the the riding the Kangaskhan. Okay, uh, if someone catches Kangaskhan and rides it, I will I will just say they win the race. Anyway, oh uh, by the way, uh, Forest is just beating Rival Four. 
it, it, it's uh, well, no, well, not quite yet. There's still where I write you, but you know, it, he, he's going oh, well, rival four, pretty simple fight, I believe. It's just uh, X attack, oh, X bad, X attack, yeah, whatever, whatever Mocha said, and then you use Y horn to kind of like you know, knock things out, knock out the right you. And now we get into uh, the fun time zone called Metronome. So let's have a little bit of fun. What, what, we, what do we think we're going to get some on the Metronome? I just put my uh, my guess in the chat that we'll see a Fisher because I personally. <laughs> you have seen it. <laughs> You're I have mean. Personally, I have personally seen the Fisher. Luckily, it did not do anything, but I have seen it. And it scared me. I want everyone else to experience this. You know what? I'm gonna put my answer. If I can actually spell metronome. There we go. Oh no! Close combat. Oh, that that'll be brutal to see. I actually don't know. Uh, wait, I think we are getting. We still, we still are getting metronome. I don't think. Oh wait, no. T Pat won't be seeing metronome because he has double edge. T Pat, uh, I hope does. JLS has Nido King, so he won't be seeing it. I'm not quite sure on Furry. I think, oh. I think it's still. And a he might have a king, but I wait. don't think he's going for king. I, I actually don't know. I have. I was not paying attention to his menu. I should be paying attention. His menu wink. If it is, then this might be the first run in the entire speed run that we just skip metronome in of its tiling. I will say, even for oh, T-Pat no, it, it, it is a range. It is a range. Yeah. So Yeah, no, he's not even going for that. So I don't and I don't think Eevee's 28 yet. No, it's 27. So this is I mean, there's a chance we don't see it with Headbutt. Thrash. Oh, thrash, okay. I mean, that's fine. Locked into it, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, and now you get Double Edge. You know, you know one one fight too late, but, you know, at least Double Edge is going to have at least a little bit more usefulness in other fights. Yeah, so we can use it definitely in Hideout. So we'll see it there. Um, hopefully Fury got some uh, attack AVs to, to help boost that up. I don't think a T Pat's gotten any. We'll see. Yeah, I don't uh, think he's gotten any AVs, and if that's the case, he will never get any AVs because all the AVs are on a 10 level cycle. And once the 10 level cycle has been determined, you will, uh, by the time you're level 16, uh, you know exactly which AVs. So because Tipa has zero attack AVs, he will never get one. Which means his EV is going to be stuck at zero for the entirety of his speed run. So while it may not be a minus attack EV, it definitely feels like one. I would like to point out that even though uh, Fury is just slightly ahead, uh, T Pat is ahead on catches. And there's that pink thing I was talking about on the way to sell a yeah, dog for Fury. Yeah, he could have, you know, gambled, but he chose not to. Anyway, so this is going to be a range. Let's see if uh, Double Edge actually gets the range on let's see if tipa gets the range i actually do not know what the range is but you know what let's get it does get the range so does get the it. only nice. metronome today we'll be seeing is of course um is of course the thrash that we just saw it's also kind of interesting that while t-pat does have oh eevee does have double edge which is a very powerful move that can deal a lot of damage the only downside is that you do have to spend a lot of time healing out of going into the menu healing and then coming back and then coming back out so while you do save time uh turn wise you do have to go in and go out of your menu a lot more but you know it's uh, it's you know, it, it's the it's interesting how time losses go. Anyway, Eevee's going to learn one final move called Glitzy Glow, a ninety time base power special attack, psychic move, which summons Light Screen when you know it attacks, which is you know very useful, but also 
It's a psychic move. We're going to poison bases. And right now, we don't really need any... We don't need the electric coverage anymore. So we no. get rid of Buzzy Buzz for the psychic move. I believe beginner strats delete... Sizzly beginner slot? strats delete Sizzly Slot because um, going faster is better than not dying for yeah. beginners. And also, if I believe you safety... Beginner notes go for boom strats anyway. Yes, on... beginner strats do go for boom strats. Yeah, so that's it's not why. like I have it just like go through all these notes myself personally. Or yeah. Anything. Also, yeah, but you, but you but you boom on Persian, so you don't need the burn. Also, yeah. we are getting a very important uh, thing here. We are talking to Madame Celadon, yeah, an interesting name for an NPC, and we are making sure that all of our Pokemon for the rest of the game have modest nature, which is plus special attack. Minus attack, and that's gonna be very useful for a uh, very John Celadon. Yeah, you know what? That's gonna be her new name. Her new name is John Celadon. But, but we can we see her? Where, where's uh, John Celadon? I, I don't know where they are. Well, you'll we'll find out anyway. Now it's time for uh, Rocket Hideout. Many people have opinions of this place. I'm a person of... Not exactly a fan of Rocket Hideout, personally, as these are some of the more tougher fights for both Pikachu and Eevee. We tend to not have a, too much of a fun time here. And we're going to be seeing a lot of differences in terms of the fights. So Eevee, if I recall, just uses Eevee and Raihon for every single fight possible. And... There are some advantages and some disadvantages of using some of these uh, uh, some of these strats. Obviously, Eevee has now having double edge can just one hit KO everything at the cost of you know taking a lot of damage. And I think there's like one fight where it's like kind of sucky for Eevee with even with double edge, and that's I believe the Grimer is a bit of a pain for Eevee. Yeah, Grimer. I think we just use uh, Blitzy Glow and Balancing Bubble. Good. Whereas Pikachu, on the other hand, does rely a lot on Nidoking to uh, carry, which does have, of course, some advantages and a lot more. That sound effect describes the Pika runner going through. <laughs> it, it, it's like it's like you're convincing me not to run Pika now by by that sound effect. I, no, no, no. Pika has a lot of advantages. It's just this is kind of like the uh, oh god moment of like of Pika when it comes to fights. It's like it can be scary if you minus attack. It's even scarier, and it just takes uh, one wrong thing, and then uh, the entire f everything is just uh, screwed. We do have like one like fine fight, but. The, a lot of the fights here are iffy at best. Even in Eevee, I do think that some of these fights are a bit iffy. Yeah, um, specifically like, um, Geo 1 is sus just because that, not from experience or anything, but that uh, Persian can be bitter. Surprisingly, Geo 1 and Pika is actually not the worst thing in the world. Like, yeah, you have to use, like, what, three X attacks and a helping hand just to make sure the right horn goes down, but as long as you're not minus attack, that's a pretty consistent fight. It's just every other fight. I mean, even then, we I think we have, like, the better grammar fight of the two. Because... Yeah. Pika is just be is just better, but it's just Jesse and James two that's coming up for uh, burst after we get to play with the Eevee a little bit is going to be an interesting fight, and so the same thing for like Tipa as well, like J and J two. I I believe it's like pretty scary for J and J two for Eevee because Arbok and Weezing have a mind of their own. Yes, that is true. Oh yeah, one thing to note about this, uh, the route that both T-Pan and Furth went up. Uh, 
JLF does pick up the Firestone here, uh, mainly because we get to ride Arcanine later. But yeah, Rocket Hideout, uh, the summary of Rocket Hideout is simply put, just don't get unlucky, right? Don't get yeah, crazy. I mean, that's, that's actually in the Eevee notes. Don't get unlucky. Just don't get unlucky. It that's might also be on the Pikachu notes, but I have to double check. Like, even like, like Jesse and James 2 is like, by still my one of my least favorite fights. Like, aside from, you know, the obvious bad fight in the game, but. Justin is like Justin is like really scary. Even if like you're running Pika with like Nido King and Rai and if you do get lucky with Rhyhorn, you can go for like Nido King plus Rhyhorn strats, which is a lot better, but it's still like not great. It's similar to Eevee, except uh we don't use an Eevee. Ooh! Oh! Yeah, JLF saw an Abra but accidentally entered into the Oh, he has a second chance though! Let's go! Ooh, and that one's glowing too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I don't think experience is too important, so I don't think that glowing matters. You just really want the catch. Yeah. Well, that's like what, a 4% into here. a 4%? That's, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I guess the experience is nice for like everything else, but you don't even have the space for Abra yet. So you kind of have to just keep the Abra in your party until you keep the Abra not in your party until you also get the Pidge. Interesting. It's like does Pidge is Pidge high enough to evolve into the two? I guess it is. Actually, no, it's not. I don't think so. I think the one that we get uh, after Celadon definitely will be, but I don't hmm. think it is here. Okay. Yeah. So we don't. So he is locking himself out of Pidge up, but if his catch tracker means anything then yeah you should be fine but yeah it does get a lot of his pokemon and more experience right at 26 is also nice for just in james too which speaking of which uh first is there so what do you do you x attack drill run and hope you need the knockout on albuck i guess no um we will actually oh no that, 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 that. well yeah we x special um let's see glow well, oh, I didn't like see you go have... for Glitz. I think, oh, I guess it's like another strat that you can go. I guess it's like a safe strat and a risky strat. The safe strat is like X special Glitzy Glow, but Forrest went for X attack right, uh, Drill Run instead. Ooh. And sadly, Drill Run missed. Thank you, 95% uh, accurate moves. We love you. So, yeah. T Bat is doing the safer strat, which is Glitzy Glow plus X special. Yes. Whereas uh, Eevee did go, whereas first went for the more riskier X attack plus drill run strat. When they both get glare. I don't know Maybe. if it's an advanced notes thing or a sheep notes thing. And also, nice Nana and Berry, uh, JLF. Uh, that, I know about that Nana and Berry. Actually, no, I, I think I pick up a swift candy instead of the Nana and Berry that's on the floor. Especially if you have. Turbo. Yeah, I'll use Turbo. Oh, no, that's a so random item, probably. according to Sandy. I know about the... Oh, it's just a random item. That is just on the floor that someone just left. I can't believe someone just leaves a berry on the floor. Sometimes. Anyway, here's Archer 1. Apparently, uh, the better Archer fight. The Not better Archer. got two. Yeah, the better but Archer fight, but it can be a bit iffy. Uh, I, I will believe say, the strat is just X special Glitzy Glow. Yes, yeah. I will say you can control the second character on this fight. That that that's all I'm gonna say about. It. Yeah. Also, uh, Ferris is now gonna get some turnaround. Ooh, that's a damage. Uh, Ferris is gonna get some turnarounds. Uh, this is because when Eevee has enough, when Eevee loves you enough. Uh, you know, Eevee wants to be, like, you know, all affectionate and especially wants to turn around when you do super effective moves. This is about the time that both Eevee, well, that Eevee gets affection. Pikachu, surprisingly, because you don't use it for a lot of the fights and kind of use other Pokemon, doesn't actually get affection in Hideout. It actually gets affection when you get to Tower, when you get to Tower. But it is, there is, of course, some advantages uh, when you do 
when you do get to this, the, the affection threshold, you do have an ability to just fully heal from status conditions, which is which can be nice, but not really uh, that useful. Also, a little fun fact about the Hypno fight. This is the only fight where Nidoqueen is actually better than Nidoking in this fight here, because you can just X-Attack Crunch and knock out the Hypno in one hit. I'm learning stuff about Pika. Anyway. But every other, but every other time, it's like, you'd rather have Nido Queen. No, I'm sorry, Nido King. Uh, oh, Giovanni like time. Can... I believe oh. in EV, this fight is sketch. Yeah, uh, on this fight, you want to X attack, uh, Sicily slide, pray that you do not get crit by the slash. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, heal up and then. Uh, keep seriously slots and cause you want to get the burn damage or you want to get the the uh person burn just to reduce the amount of uh physical damage that it does to you yeah well it is faster but you know yeah pikachu has a more interesting fight which i'll get to uh that a little bit later uh but yeah this fight can be a bit scary is obviously scary for eevee but Thankfully, Ferris is not getting crit, and thankfully for Rhyhorn, you just get a free heal here by using Bouncy Bubble. Yeah, plus you're faster than it, so it's... Unless you don't KO, unless you're minus special attack, in which case you don't get quite the free KO. Oh, that's also true. Oh, there's a crit on t pat side. Yeah, so he probably has to... Oh, he's risking it. Oh, that, that's a huge risk, but... Oh, <laughs> that was a crit, too? Oh my word! Well, uh, I hope it with Bob take, you know this bouncy bubble being minus special attack gets a knockout. Okay. Oh yes. It, uh, wait. Nope. Yes. Uh, no, that's a knockout. That's a one hundred percent a knockout. I saw. I didn't see any red. Oh, okay. To be fair, I have seen in some cases in a lot of games where it's like it barely has any. That has no red. But it's still enough of a red that's like, yep, okay, fine, we're just gonna have to accept the fact that it lived on one. I'm talking to you, Dondozo. Stop living I, at one. No, I have a clip where it is the... Another Titan Pokemon that is in the negative red. Uh, I just want to make it note that Forrest did not pick up the Ultra Balls the, in Rocket Hideout. There are three Ultra Balls that you can choose to pick up here in Rocket Hideout. It's really only recommended if A, you have uh, a lot of catches to do, or if you're just playing safe. But if you have like a lot of catches and if you're planning to catch some fringe Pokemon, such as Magma, then you absolutely want to pick up those Ultra Balls. It's only three, it's only th three, or is it five? I think it's five in here and three. Right, five. It is five Ultra Balls, so it is a fair amount of Ultra Balls that you can pick up. Yeah, and then it's three that's in a Pokemon yeah. Tower. Uh, right now, just to let you know, peep, this race is extremely close between Teapot and Forest. Well, Forest does seem to be a little bit ahead of Teapot, especially when it comes to menuing and, and fights. Uh, Teapot does have two more catches over Forest, so I do believe that Teapot is in the lead, but like I said, anything can happen. And to the point that JLF can easily catch up. I think T-Pat still, still has an upset of the century as well. So uh, JLF or Furious and T-Pat still have some evolutions on hand. So this is really it's still right anyone's game. Do not let anything else like be like. I remember the only factual way to know who's ahead and who's behind is when someone gets the Koga. That's like the purest point of you're in Koga. If you get to Koga first, you are ahead. But like I said, yeah, it's like what Phoenix says. Run's not over till Slowbro is dead. Specifically Champ Slowbro. Although depending on what your second Pokemon... Ooh, that's a close for T-Pad. 
depending yeah, on the uh, risk you know, it you can skirt the bottom of those stones and not hit the vision but keep that not risk it it's just it's just better just to wait on full honesty but yeah it'll be interesting to see you know what kind of strats Tifat and Ferris choose to do when they get to a certain point, depending on what X items they choose to buy later on, will determine what strats they can and they can and can't do. So it'll be interesting to see, but like I said, we have, of course, the most important after this, after the final Jesse and James, well, not the final, but the Jesse and James 3 fight. We're going to go into another catching section where we're going to be having ourselves a new main and a new ride and hopefully for all of our runners is they get those pokemon as fast as possible but unfortunately uh, sadly for both of these runners so far none of them have seen rick yeah which is pretty unfortunate but we do want to know if you don't know it's uh rick ghastly yeah, we do want to see him before we leave here. Because Unfortunately, ideally, uh, he might be giving us up. And letting us down. Which will be an incredible letdown. Because that means he's actually deserting us. I am never going to do that ever. I'm probably never going to do that ever again. So I want to get it out of my chest. And for everyone who did listen to that, I'm sorry. But I'm also not sorry. I want to do it once. Oh, never mind. There he is. I, you know, I regret my apology. There he is. There's our, there's our Ghastly. Also, if anyone's complaining that, oh, Let's Go only has only four jokes, here's an idea. Uh, you, you, you make some jokes. Wait, Boom. T-Pat not getting the Gashley, but I think T-Pat might be. I don't know if T-Pat is uh, he has to skip. 50 plans, and so he pro wait. The ga er, I think Gashley's one of no, those. No, 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 he's, yeah, he's unplanning it. He probably has to catch... Uh, something. Oh, Probably. coffee. Yeah, no, no that oh, makes sense. Okay. So, yeah, it's also a debate as to whether or not you should or shouldn't law here, but anyway, Jesse and James 3. It's the exact same fight as Jesse and James 2, except Arbok and Coughing are much higher level, which means it's kind of scary, and also you cannot go for the X attack strat. In, I mean, you can't. I mean, well, you shouldn't go for the X attack strap because right one is a little too low level. Yeah. Oh. Oh no. Uh, no, Evie's so, still alive. That's fine. Evie's, Evie's up. Just got an X attack and or an X bed and Lizzie glow again, and Evie's done. Uh. I maybe you probably should. Is is this enough? That like, is it plus four enough? Are you a plus four? Plus, plus four should be enough. Well, let's see. He is definitely he is healing. Oh no, he's going for plus six. I think that should be fine. Oh, is this plus four or plus three? I can't. This is plus four. Okay, this is. Oh, plus it's four. had to hit a paralysis last turn. Okay, you know that's fine. So Vez, go for Eevee. So T Pack can finally Eurus say goodbye to my special. Oh no, Vez! Eevee died. What happened there? I was not paying attention. Poison into a another attack. Uh, that's unfortunate. So he's gonna have to adapt. I mean, I guess you could revive and drill run the Arbok and hope it just gets KO'd. It does mean that the okay, so it's not like the end of the world, but yeah, first did get unlucky. This fight can also suck. This is obviously the worst Jesse and James fight in the game. But, you know. Whatever. T-Pat now having more of a firm lead because getting a much better Jesse and James fight now gets to go onto our Pokemon Road, or better known as Route 18. And 
We're going to be looking for a few things. For T-Pat specifically, he does have 30 feet caught. He is, a and he has planned to at least catch Ponyta, Psyduck, Doduo, Pidgey, and Coughing, as well as, of course, the Staryu, Starmie, and Lapras and Porygon. So, hoping to see that he gets it all. He does, he is on 50. He does have, since he does have the Vulpix, I do believe that Nine Tails is an option for him if Pidgey does not show up. So yes. he does have, of course, multiple op multiple backups, and of course, yeah. Forest now finally gets to leave the fight, and and thankfully, Cur you know, Cubone is still alive, so he does get some experience and doesn't have to revive it. And so both of our EV runners can say goodbye to their EV strats. Oh yeah, uh, JLF is on um Geo. I oh. say that T Pat does have to have Eevee for one last thing, and that's to get get away from this Norlax. Oh yeah, that is true. Uh, Forrest does not need that because he does have Ghastly. Bela won through that Geo fight. Yeah, the Geo fight for Pikachu is way easier. Uh, it is a little bit more time consuming because you need to turn one double X attack, turn two Zippy Zap plus X attack again to be a plus six, and then for Rhyhorn, you need to double kick along with a helping hand. So you need a helping hand boost, as well as plus six for double kick to even get a knockout. And if you have minus attack, that's not even guaranteed. So, oh, that's very good for T-Pad, getting an immediate Ponyta, which allows him to, if he wants to, rare candy immediately and get himself a much faster Red and Rapidash. Yeah, I, I don't foresee T-Pad not doing that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm pretty sure that the moment he gets it, uh, actually wait, it depends on, actually no, in with his party, because he has Eevee still in the party, I believe. Yeah, no, he's 100%. Whoa! Well, yeah, get rid of Eevee, get rid of uh, Rockhorn, and go ahead and run. There is an evolve. argument because Machop and, yeah, he's not doing it, but because Machop, there could be an argument that because both Machop and, um, Cubone are so close to evolving, there is an argument to uh, keep. But I guess in Eevee, you just do it right away because you want the faster ride. In Eve, it's like if you're running Pikachu, because you will be having uh, Growlithe evolve into Arcanine, which has comparable speeds between the two. Uh, it's okay, it's slightly slower. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do the Evolve Pony turn to Rapidash immediately, but in EV, it is recommended that you do it immediately. Yeah, will we see JLF go for the uh, Growlithe strats in tower, you think? Yeah, so Growlithe strats in tower is similar if EV decides to go for put a Clefairy or a Paris next to um, uh, next to them, which essentially you're kind of baiting the other side to attack the Growlithe and knock it out while you're using the Pikachu to attack. And the advantage of knocking out your own Growlithe is when you ride it and catch Pokemon, it doesn't get any experience, meaning it doesn't get any unnecessary level up. So it does have, of course, the dual purpose of be it being knocked out. So you don't get experience and uh, it being your ride. The only issue of sack strats is you do you could use it for an evolution, of course. But it's like, yeah, even if Growlithe is full HP, it is level 18, right? It just gets knocked out immediately, which is really nice. So, hopefully for first, he gets also an instant Rapidash. That would Ooh, be... Ooh, JLF getting a glowing... Uh... Yes. Yeah. here. Well... Again, I don't think the experience matters too much at this point in the game. He is choosing to go for double... No, is he... Cho yeah, okay. He is choosing to go for uh, ult for ultable great. He does miss the circle, which is a bit of a uh, annoying thing because it can, um, you know, break out. Thankfully, it didn't, but yeah. You can go for, like, double great great. Which is a bit of a risk, but hey, you know, our little Pokemon get some level ups. That's pretty nice. And actually, Kingla now evolves, which is, you know, pretty cool. Yes. Get that out of the way. 
Uh, I'm not sure if Forrest has caught his uh, rapid. Uh, he has not caught his ponytail yet, so he's still, you know, waiting. Do you think T Pat's going to go for this Pidgeotto that's right above this uh, this duck here? Uh, he could. That does mean he has to cat. That does mean he has to Firestone, but I'm pretty sure that's a worthwhile trade. I think he might continue to look, but he might choose to get the. Pidgeot instead of getting the tentacle. I think that's I think the Pidgeotto is absolutely way better of a catch than, ten than tentacle because you get two controllers. Because when you're surfing in water, you only get to be a uh, one controller and not two. But does choose to not go for it. Just choose to see if he can find a Pidgey instead, which would be better. But again, it's less likely for it to spawn. So let's see if uh, T Pac gets punished with this decision. There's a rat. There goes three silver raspberries. Pagey does not spawn, so he has to. So I believe he has to go for Tentacle now. And plus Firestone. Yeah, which there is a Firestone in the path. Sli slightly out the way, but still in the path. Yeah, whereas for. Sorry, he's not finding his pony yet. He's gone through the entirety of. Um. Route 17, and he has not found a single pony. He's on the last patch of grass, so he has to stay until he finds a pony. Oh, I mean, go that for the, technically go for the, counts. Oh, there oh, there's a pony. There's a pony. I mean, you can get a Rapidash. So like, if it's not the worst catch in the world, you do have to Raz and I believe double Ultra Ball. I will say, okay. I, I, uh, I, in my race, I, I did. Right, I, I did say, actually go through without yeah. finding a pony. Yeah, I was going to so say that JLF it. did evolve his Arcanine early. I do believe that the strats still work as Arcanine. I do believe that both Arbok and Coughing still see a... Okay, actually, no, it, it, I did have problems with um, Arcanine beforehand, so... Might be a problem. It might be a bit of a problem. So right now we see Ferris also doing the same thing as um, uh, T-Pat, immediately menuing, immediately getting that Ponyta, and immediately putting in, um, getting that Rapidash as we want the fastest movement in the game. I yes. believe Aerodactyl is slightly fast in terms of movement, but it is of course extremely out of our way, so we don't want to get it. And now, this is where another important aspect comes in. We are now going to be main switching to our Staryu. And so, we're going to be having a look at CP to see how good, in quotation marks, is uh, our thing. So he does actually... Ooh, interesting. So, he does ha see a Pidgeot here. He can technically also go for... So, this does mean he doesn't have to go for Tentacool anymore. So... His punish of not getting the, um, what is it? His the punish Pidgeot of not getting earlier. the Pidgeot, Pidgeotto earlier was not a mistake. Well, he didn't get punished for it. So now he doesn't have to get Tentacle anymore. He just has to go get his star and get his, uh, what is it? His coughing. coughing. And that will be done for his catches. Oh, that Rapidash almost ran him over. So yeah, now, hopefully... Did T-Pat the... get a small rat? Uh, he... Oh, no. that's a 1%. But uh, you oh, do not don't want to catch wanna, that. Don't want to catch that. <laughs> now, unfortunately, it does not have Hydro Pump, so we kind of uh, need that. Not need that. It is funny, but you do not want the star me. We do want the star you. And so far, he's, you know, not exactly getting what he wants yet. Obviously, there's still a little bit more time. So hopefully, we're going to see the star spawn soon. There, there it is. We will still want the lore because he still wants the coughing. If he didn't need the coughing, he could have chosen not to lore. But he does need the lore. Up because he doesn't need the coughing. And it is, I did not check the CP, 1075. So that is above average, if I remember correctly. I believe so, and we want to see a good 
Uh, special attack and speed? Hold on, I can figure out. Yeah, good special attack, good speed, everything else is good. We don't want to see good attack. Let me just... We already, know, we already know what his nature is, right? Cause yeah. So it's kind so of interesting how this run goes from an Eevee that has perfect stats, but you do not know what its nature is going to be, versus Stami, where we know its nature, but we do not know its IVs. Uh, there's a rat. Does T-Pat not have a rat? T-Pat has... looks like a bit rat, but not a small He has rat. a big rat, but not a small rat. So yeah, that replaces the Vulpix. Yeah, that's 100% understandable. Ooh, that's... He has one Ultra Ball left for coughing. I'm just saying that right now. Uh, where is Star? Where's... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yes, yes, 962 to 1171 is apparently the start range. So, 1060 is about... Average. Well, is it well, ten seventy five is roughly average? But like I said, CP is just combined power. Actually, that's just the better name. Combined power. It just combines everything together to form a arbitrary number that means something to some people. You know, hold, hold on, that. Let, let's let's coin that. However, its stats could all be put into attack. For all we know. So, until we have a look at the numbers, uh, we won't know what's a good special attack or what's a bad, or what's bad. I also do not know the numbers off by heart of, like, what's good and what's bad. So, chat, you're going to have to help me out with that because it's either going to be really good or really bad. First is getting himself a rat, which I didn't realize that he never had a big rat, but you know what? He has a big rat now. So that means Forrest is only going to get himself a coughing and a star, and that's about, and that's all he needs for his catches. Whereas T-Pad is 100% done with his catches. He does not need to catch a single Pokemon left. The final two Pokemon will be the two gift Pokemon. And yeah. Um, oh, okay. Sorry, I was about to sneeze, but I was able to get rid of the sneeze. A lot of pollen out here in the UK right now. Not great, but whatever. We'll deal with it. Hey, T-Pat doing some party management. Um, and we're about to see the stats on this star. Yeah. So, does keep Dodrio, Dodrio second? It, I see... I was not paying attention. So, level 45 is 77 and something else. I, I, I Again, I do um, not the know. The speed the was 88. I did not see what the special attack was. Uh, so Sandy is, is saying, that what is that special attack? I do not know if it's that, that's a good thing or that's a bad thing. I'm assuming bad. Okay, so we have good speed, bad special attack for T-Pad. Uh, Forrest is about to get his star, so let's see what his CP is. Uh, t had 1075, I believe. Forrest has 1065. So, average, just slightly worse. You know, a bit worse than T-Pat, but not by much. It's doable. Again, we do not know how the stats are evenly distributed, so we'll see what happens there. Do you know what would be really cool if JLF gets, like, the God Star and just catches up to everyone? That would be really sick. Anyway. That would be... Hi, Tentacle. We're not catching you. And depending on who you are, we're not catching Tentacle either. Because Tentacle is just as annoying as a star. I will say, if you have, like... Even if you caught a star, if you get yourself a shiny star... Uh, please, please main switch to that. I don't care how much time loss you would actually lose. But, you know. Please do. Even if there's, like, a 999. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're about to head to Scientist Ted. Uh, this fight can be a bit, uh, iffy. But with Dodrio, if you have Dodrio, uh, Thunderbolt is essentially a game. It is a bit slower to go for Dodrio strats here than just using Rapidash. But, it, it, but again, it is more consistent. Yeah, 
the the you, risk you have of going like, rapid dash is a verbal crit on the star. Yeah. But of course, because of t having a Dodrio on the second slot, he does it does make another fight a lot easier. Well, it makes him one fight more consistent than the other fight, because uh, we have to go for Fire Blast. Now, I understand if you run Pokemon Coliseum, I know the words Fire Blast and the number 85% is a bit scary. Don't worry. Uh, a, we only use it once, and B, we have a worse move called Hydro Pump. Hydro Pump. Same base power. Is it the same? Yeah, same base power. Just weaker, just less accurate. And we go it at least, like, maybe three times, depending on your special attack. Maybe more. So, and remember, oh yeah, remember when it was like the last time we fought a gym, which was like almost an hour and like 20 minutes or something? It's been a while, hasn't it? Uh, I think we're actually about to get access to our, what's this, third gym that we Yes, this is the third, this is the third gym. Uh, Pokemon Scott Levada did take a page out of the Let's Go's book and saying, you know what? We're go when we're doing the gyms, we're gonna do it when we are overleveled. And this is one of the main, and this is the main reason that we skipped Vermillion, Celadon, and well, technically, and Future, Future as well. Well, Future has a second reason, but the main reason that we skipped is because we do not want to, you know, take too long doing gyms, and Starmie can just one shot all of them. Sorry, stop me. So, Eevee goes picks up that Max Elixir. Pikachu doesn't, although that is a bit scarier for Pikachu later, as when we do have to use the Max Elixir, the Max Ether, no, Max Elixir or the Ether, we have to be very careful not to use the wrong move. Sorry, Max Ether or Ether. Yeah, I've always wondered why Pika does not go for the Max Elixir and goes for the the ether instead. God menu. We set up our menu specifically so that we can have X specials and by have and that ether is required to be picked up by Pikachu to set up God menu. For the rest of the run. Anyway, T Pack's doing uh our favorite gym puzzle lane. Uh, yeah. which is you no know, just a quiz. Push it. Yeah. And for this quiz show, it is, if you want to just be lame or be safe, it's one, two, 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 one. But he did answer the fourth question too. Let's see what he answers the final question. Yeah, so one is technically the faster one for the last one, but the last one can just be answered anything and it is correct. It is always correct. But one, two, 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 one is essentially the safest thing to do and the easiest number combination number to remember. As for the Blame Fight itself, uh, X Special Attack, uh, Heal if Confused, Skull Spam. Yeah. Depending on your speed, you might not want, you might not outspeed the Ninetales nor the Rapidash, depending on how slow your speed is. For t -Bat, I believe his speed is fine. I also was not checking Ferris' stats at all. I was too distracted. So, I do not know how good or bad his Starmie is. I will say I was exactly the same. I did not see stats all over the system. So it's either he tells me or someone else tells me because, or we just find out the hard way. That also works too. I also was not checking jail. I don't think he's caught his start yet, jail. I don't think jail has. He has not caught his start, yet. so we, me not paying attention is completely fine. We just do not want to see the number 9, 7, and 3. We, do, we actually just don't want to see a number 9. Oh, hi, Weezing. Uh, we no, don't want to see a number yeah. 9 at all on the no CP. No 3 digits. No 3 no digits. No 3 digits. We want to see 4. Although, now that I said 3, we might have spoken it into existence. We might have spoken it into existence. That, because 9, 7, 3 just means that he has... Yeah. Uh, Iron, I'll let you know. Uh, two of our runners got minus special attack. on their EV. And one of our runners convinced himself that he got minus attack. It's 
So now we go on what about an hour and a half without doing gems. We're about to do what three gems in a row before we get back to story. Yes. Yeah, so, so we just we just finished playing gem. We're now going to Vermillion to fight um, Lieutenant Surge, and then going back to what Celadon to go to Erica. Yeah. Like, so we're doing this back now back back. because. Well, two reasons. One, we're doing the gym rush now because we we just want to get out of the way. But also, we want to get some. We want to do it now because we're like twenty levels over leveled. Scar and Violet Runners will know what that feeling's like, just being over leveled for every single fight. Uh but also, we want to get the TM for Thunderbolt coming here to give Dami almost perfect coverage because Scald and Psychic hits most things in Kanto neutrally. There's two things that we do not hit neutrally. The first thing is Slowbro, which Thunderbolt fixes, and the second thing is Executor. There's only one, and we'll get to that. Yeah, and luckily we do have a 2C for that coverage, but right now t pass on Surge, and this is just a spam, a, a spam of Scald. Yes, this is just Spam Scald. It's similar to how... It's also like kind of funny that we send a Lightning Electric Weak Pokemon against an Electric Gym. But uh, due to our superior level advantage, uh, this will not be a problem at all. As Ferris is also going to be doing um, his thing. Uh, even though Ferris is a bit behind, he does technically have one extra catch over T-Pat, or at least one extra evolution done. So there is that little bit of catch up that he's going to be able to have later. As JLF is about to get his star, and it is a. Ooh, that's 10 34. 1 10 34. That is the worst of the three stars in terms of CP, and he didn't miss the Ultra Ball and star. You did attack, so be a bit careful. Just take a little bit more time, JLF. And then yeah, uh, but again, he could have the best stats of the three. We just don't know. Like, it might be the lowest CP, but it could be the most min-max star we've ever seen. And as I see from his catch count, I do believe that is... That is his final catch. He is not going to be catching Grammar in the mansion. So every single one of our runners, assuming the math is not wrong, has completed all of their catches. It is now fight time. Also, Mocha, I want to ask you something. Are you Hydro Pump slot 2, Thunderbolt slot 4, or the other way around? I am Hydro Pump slot 2, Thunderbolt slot 4. Same. Mainly because that's the only way I know. It, it feels weird to think that Pump goes in 4 and T-Bolt goes in 2. That, it, my brain just doesn't I think, compute that. I, I think, I don't know wh how, what I did when I was learning. It was, I believe I was Pump 4, Thunderbolt 2. But then I changed it to Pump 2, Thunderbolt 4. But I don't exactly know why I've changed it. I Question for you. Question did. for you. What's... What's your cutest Pokemon? Uh, according to this game, anything from Kanto. Personally, and I think a lot of people are going to disagree with this, I think the cutest Pokemon is Flamingo. But, you know. See, I'm, I'm more of a Sprigatito guy myself, so... You know, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. It, they're both cute in their own way. In this game, if you just show any Kanto Pokemon, it is considered cute. I don't, I mean, what, I, it, I think the speed would be a little bit more interesting if there was like a select number of Pokemon that you have to catch to show a cute Pokemon. I think that would be, at least in my opinion, more interesting, but, you know, they decide, you know what, any Pokemon you show is cute. Most people will show the star, however, some people will like to be funny and show uh, coughing or muck or whatever. Imagine, oh no, I I don't want to put it there. I don't think we should have it as RNG, which Pokemon is considered cute. But I think it's just, maybe if it's like a select few would be, would make this speed run probably less bearable. 
Yeah, but T Fat's going into this fight. It's just psychics all the, all all around for yeah, just, gym. No, just if you just spam the right move, you just spam the correct move, then you get psychic. You can accidentally hydro pump the tangler, and depending on your special attack, you can knock it out. Uh, except if your T Fat special attack, because from what I've been reading, uh, his special attack is equivalent to a neutral nature special attack, considering how bad it is or how low it is. And then, oh yeah, the next fight is going to be a little bit of an interesting fight. I believe two, at least two of our runners, from what I can see, is going for, uh, don't do your session. Wait, JLF got Thunderbolt on Starmie despite Do Duo being in on the field. Yes, okay. I noticed that. Okay, F fine game. Be, be mean. Well, I guess that's technically faster, but shush. I mean... The fastest strat is just Thunderbolt Rapidash, but I know two of our runners are going for it. One of them is not, at least according to uh, the party management. Or how the party is uh, laid out. So, the next fight that Teapot is going to go to is uh, the blue fight. For some reason, Blue decides, you know what? I'm going to fight you in Rock. I know we're raiding Rocket Hate uh, Silphco to get rid of the Rocket Runs, but you know what? I need to, oh hi Ditto, I need you to test your skill, so I'm going to fight you. And you know, so, waste precious time. This is Mortal Kombat test your mind right now, is what I'm hearing. Yeah. That's what Blue is saying, test your might. So yeah, also a little bit of a thing, uh, because T-Pat walked slightly upwards, uh, the animation of going up gets skipped, so you know, it saves you a whopping two seconds. Just by tapping yourself up, but don't tap up too much, otherwise uh, you'll just go back inside the gym and you don't want to do that. Yeah, I still have not mastered that because I have not tried it yet. Yeah. But now going... two seconds will be good. <laughs> yeah. Boris now going to um, the... going for the grass gym. Uh, every single trainer has really bad vision. Like seriously, I think someone need someone needs to open up a glasses shop in uh, Kanto because it, literally no one can see. Do you not see Erica's gym? It's full of flowers and plants. It's all the pollen that's in the air that's blocking their vision. Okay, I guess we can make it the reasoning that all the trainers are currently sneezing and they cannot see so properly. So I'll, I'll you know I'll go with that head cannon. That's fine. That, 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 that's a head cannon that we can go with instead. Uh, so the blue fight has two ways that you can do it. Uh, the way that we're going to be seeing T-Pat do it is the safe way, which is you X attack Dodrio and knock out the Executor, the only Pokemon that Starmie's perfect coverage is not perfect against. And then Charizard, when that comes out, you use Scold plus X special. If you are low on X specials, you have to kind of risk a pump. Which I know one runner has done so, because you do need to keep at least one X special, and thankfully uh, T Pat does have uh, four X specials, so he's completely fine in that regard. Yeah, the yeah, other way is using rapid doing dash. Eight strats. Lame. You should risk everything. I'm kidding. Obviously, he, T Pat has a choice of whether or not he's going to be playing safe or playing risky. It will be interesting to see what strats he goes to. Um, the, uh, after, uh, Silphco, it'll be interesting to see what happens there, but now, we have the next fight. This next fight oh. is completely fine, it has no problems whatsoever, and yeah. no one had a single problem ever when doing this next fight, isn't that right, Mocha? Oh yeah, this fight is perfectly safe, like, you just Nothing do everything, can go wrong. all the inputs are under your control, Yeah, this is a completely good. safe fight. It is just as good as Arvin 2 in Path of Legends. Nothing can go wrong. Yeah. So, we're at Archer I'm 2. I'm hoping you notice my sarcasm, because yeah, this is everything that's going wrong. Uh, people have been guessing how many turns is going to be for T-Pad. We want to see three, because it's the best turns you can have. Four is okay. Five is... 
Eh, and six plus is why I'm like you. Yeah, and, and yeah. We want to see uh, no protect. Well, we don't want to see the mocha. explosion or self destruct. No protect. Yeah, what well, we don't want to see is Thunderbolt Paralyze, fully para. We don't want to see that. We don't want to see Thunderbolt, period. Self okay, Protect, per Self Destruct is. Eh. Yeah. It's not the greatest. Uh, unless Q Bone Focus Energy? Nah. So we are going to have to knock out this Mach. Uh, this Mach does have Minimize, and that will be uh, pretty bad if it goes for it. So this is definitely on track, at least for. Not even a four turn, I don't think. It depends on what this keyboard does. Be five. I oh, think this is more on track of five. It depends on what Cubo does. Or if Cube. Oh no, this is a heal from. This is a heal from Trace. We're seeing a potion. So this is a five turn fight. If right? Cubo to go for headbutt, it might have been different. It's not going for headbutt. It's but, going for potion. Yeah, it had to go. It had to go for a potion. Yeah, so this is like what five turn. This is like what the fifth turn. And that was turn three. If I can count correctly. Yeah, this is more. Yeah, this. Yeah, this is. This is now turn four. So this is absolutely a five turn archer for T Pad, which is slow. But what are you gonna do about it? The answer is really nothing. Never mind. This is six turn. It's not really a protect. That is a protect from wheezing. This is six turn. Oh, at least it was a thunderbolt. Oh, is that thunderbolt range? Actually, this might be that. seven. Wait, might still be five. It depends on what Cubon does. No, Cubon get it. pumped up. No, is T Bat risking it? I don't know. He he just he just pressed psychic. Yeah, he's risking it. Yeah. So this is a it's chance fun. for this is a chance for uh for oh, us to catch up. Got it! It did die, okay. It it went. <laughs> the only thing I'm a little concerned about is the experience, because you do need the experience to reach level 48. I think EXP might be fine, but we'll see. So I think this is what? Eight? Oh no. What was it? Like five to I, I cannot count. Is this five? Yeah, I think that was... That might have been six. 5.5 5 to 6. I don't know. I've, I I should have kept... There's a way to keep track if... uh It's six. Yeah, there's a way to keep track by keeping in track of psychic PPs. So yeah. Six plus. Kind of cringe. But this is the chance that Ferris can have to catch up. To see how good his arch is going to be. Again, ideally, we just see uh, Explosion plus No Protect, but uh, Thunderbolt No Protect means you can have the faster 4 turn, um, potentially. So let's see what Ferris gets. Turn 1. Which is Thunderbolt? Thunderbolt No right. Protect. You know what's in? Uh, I don't think you can risk it, but he did... It is technically like high HP, but I think you just have to go for. I think you uh, can risk it on this one. You have to heal here. Yeah, yeah. It, the notes say just oh. heal. Yeah, because. Uh, I mean, this is fine. Like robot, this could be the fastest uh, Forta, depending on what Cubone does. Yeah. Self destruct did fail, so Cubone is not it. Well, it depends on the target. Cubone attack, please? No, it's focused. It doesn't up. fine. As long as Cubona kills the Raticate next turn, it's uh, a okay. Or then over the next two turns, ideally. He's not get so, so sadly he first not getting the fastest four turn fight, but it is still relatively fast compared to at least T Pat six. Okay, there's a nice. okay, with the so crit. Yeah, so first is getting itself four turn, which is really nice. Oh, that's not that. Apparently, uh, JLF has a very bad star. Apparently, in this level that he is right now, it is 109. Which is think... very... Which is... Yeah. Which I think this just might be like zero IV, but I'm not quite sure. Might, it's just very low.
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, uh, there is technically a Jesse and James four, but uh, you just psychic our box, psychic psychic coughing, and you're fine. Yeah. Now we're at least T pass to uh, to uh, Geo two. Yeah. So, but this is going to be much easier than the first one. <laughs> now we get into a little bit more of an interesting place because, well, actually, wait, does Tipa have? One, yeah, Tipa has technically one more Pokemon evolved for us. Does, didn't his Pokemon evolve yet, or maybe one of the Pokemon he hasn't got yet evolved? Wait, no, not. Uh, Tipa has a forty-eight. Thing? No, Tipa has a forty-eight. For us, is at forty-seven. I'm just trying to figure out. What Yours exactly. has uh, looks like they're off the table. Okay. So he is technically one less uh, Pokemon that need. He just still needs one more Pokemon that needs to evolve. But it's pretty much a close race. I don't know if T Pat just playing safe strats for the entirety of the rest of the game is going to be enough for him to maintain his lead. But what I do know is that if first wants to have a chance to catch up. He definitely needs to probably say, screw it, I'm going for one piece strats. The the rest of the game. Just so that he can catch. Also, no, first, you do not use that next special. You don't need to do that. Wrong fight. Now we get ourselves the most useless item in the entire speedrun, the Master Ball. We will never be using it. Wait, I thought it was used last year in the tournament, wasn't it? It was used, I believe, exact. Oh, actually, it might have been used twice. I know Dynam used it to catch a Venom to evolve into a Venom Moth. But, which made it so that people had... Because we had the tracker on stream last time, uh, we had to... Spider had to... After that round, add Venom off to the tracker. Yes. Uh, people are saying, I was like, oh, but wait, at 48, what are the last two Pokemon? Uh, we get a free Lapras and a free um, uh, Porygon in Silph Co. Uh, and also a rare candy, which I now learned that even if you don't need that rare candy, uh, you still should pick up the Lapras because it's faster. Even if it is, you have to go up to floor 7. Because, you know, free catch instead of risking a catch. Uh, only in, P I believe only Pika has the potential to skip that rare candy, whereas Eevee it's less likely because you immediately candy the Rapidash. Whereas Pikachu, you can actually like, get enough experience to not do that. Now I want to keep an keep eye a keen eye on uh, T Pat's shopping because the shopping here is going to dictate a lot of what's going to happen when it comes to uh, what strats people are going to be considering. Specifically, I want to see if T Pat chooses to buy an X defense and eleven X special defenses. Uh, yeah. That's going to be interesting intel because if he chooses not to buy them, it means he is forcing himself to be locked into riskier strats in the end game. Just oh, sorry, into safer strats into the yeah. end game. So, I'm gonna guess with it this close we might see the riskier strats. I call it this this is really close. I also see that he is not buying full heals because he probably hasn't used them. So we see eleven X speeds. No oh, X special no, defense. No, no X specials, okay. And no X defense. Oh no, either. there's a there's a full heals. No, never mind. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So, T Pat is essentially telling us he is not taking risks. He is playing it safe pretty much throughout the entirety of the entirety of the end game. As if you have an X defend and an X special defense, you can go for riskier strats, but it is foretelling us that he is going completely safe. Which, we'll get to what those strats are later on to see, depending on whether or not Forrest decides to buy those items. As he is now approaching both his gift Pokemon and his, uh, uh, his shopping his as well. Shopping, yeah. Pat like, right now is yeah. in uh, Sabrina's gym, which is uh, bigger on the inside. Did he it's go the wrong way? 
I yeah. think so. Yeah, I think that's the wrong way. You're supposed to go top right there, not bottom right. Thankfully, it's not a big mistake. You can just go back. So, you know, a little bit of time loss, but, you know, you know, he's trying to keep the competition at least a little bit more interesting. I believe. I don't think he's trolling. I mean, it's also a little thing about these teleporters. If you walk in a very specific way, uh, you can skip the animation of, like, the character, like, fixing herself. Which is, you know, really cool. Imagine if these portals were random, please no. We like some consistency in our games, please. Yeah, I mean, that's thinking with portals right there, but too much thinking with portals. Right. As for Sabrina, uh, also, JLF is on um, the Archer fight. We'll quickly talk to, to talk about that old question. Uh, Sabrina, uh, double X special, one X speed, assuming there's light screen turn one. Uh, you stole the light screen turn two, and you have fun if there's no light screen turn on either of those two turns. Uh, JLF, let's see what his uh, first archer turn is. Protect self destruct. Protect self destruct, okay. okay. So, on track of four turn, but this can go south somewhat fast. Ooh, light wait, screen hold turn on. One. Psychic turn one. Or did he. Wait, it was a light screen turn. No, 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 it was light screen turn one. I just wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Golbat being sent out second for Archer is a bit annoying because it does have crunch, whereas Weezing. I guess Weezing does have Dark Pulse, but typically doesn't go for it. There's an Archer's uh, Weezing also out there. Before. Yeah. Sucker Punch Cuba, that's nice to see. So Cuba is attacking. That's how that's how sucker punch works. Oh, that's a headbutt. That's not a boomerang. We want to see boomerang game. Uh, if if you have an eight seven, that's four. So this is the third cycle. So this is turn four. Ooh. Protect again. Oh my goodness! I don't know, boy. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, and he's yeah. gonna take the heal. So this is gonna be. Now turn five. This is four, looking like the, the archer fight I started to have. Yeah. Well, Cubone's attacking. That's a nice crit. Come on, we can make this six turn game. We believe. Also, I was not checking for us shopping. Did he buy the X special defenses or X defense? I did not check. Well, I'm going to figure that out. Or, well, let's see. Please, six turns. Don't miss. Thank you. We're okay, good. it's at least a 6 for JLF. So, pretty ass archers, to be honest. Archers being a bum. Anyway, uh, Teeth Teep is doing early, early teeth. teeth. Okay, so there's another question. Early Teeth, Late Teeth. Early Teeth? Late Teeth. Why, why mess up my movement going from Koga's Gym down to the to get pushy push. Why do you want to hold on to teeth? That's disgusting. I don't know where that's been. I don't know where those teeth have been. They've been on the ground right there. Getting sand all over. It's been in someone's mouth. They go put it right back in their mouth. I don't want to touch that. Now, anyway, does teeth have Pokemon? Oh, come on. Yes. He does have 50 Pokemon. Let's go. So t now in the lead. Confirmed. First, a bit behind. But, you know, not too much. And JLF, you know, he's he's catching up. He's he's, he's coming. He's coming. Hey, Christ, so like I got a question said. for you. Yep. Do you have any stats for Caden? Uh... I know that a uh, forest has one of the like one of the most uh, amount of times lost in Caden, but you know, hopefully we don't see too many turns. Like I think like a his average is like twelve turns, which is pretty slow. Yeah. So uh, I did not see what turn one was, but I think that was turn one protect. That's nice. 
And then hopefully the Beedrill does not do anything. Uh, too drastic. Does choose the Psychic. I guess his special attack is pretty naff. But I'm pretty sure plus two just kills, right? Or am I just being wrong? Maybe plus two just doesn't kill. Uh, T-Pat does have to conserve his Psychics. You do need at least the uh, four. You do need at the very least... Oh, Pokemon Box. That's... Oh, he hasn't done his party management yet. That's... New. Oh, that's actually clever. Go through Caden first, and then use a Max Elixir. That's actually kind of smart. Yeah, that, it's that... not technically optimal. Oh, because of the experience! He wasn't the right level yet because he didn't get the experience from, um... What's his face? From Archer. From Archer, because he died. So this actually means that the Starmie is actually going to be slightly lower experience throughout the entire game for going forward from this point. I don't think that might that matters too much, but there could be cases where that could come into play. I'm hoping it doesn't matter too much for T-Pat's sake, but it is interesting. I didn't realize that he didn't have enough experience or enough levels yet, because like I said, if... You go to level 47, and you don't get all the experience, you do not get that level up in time. I know that for a fact. If you go to up to 46, you can miss one Pokemon, but for 47, no. Yeah, so what probably happens is he'll level up in Lance. He'll probably level up in the Charizard and not the Gyarados. Which I don't think matters too much when it comes to... Uh, experience. Oh yeah, Faris has a Cadence, uh, Cadence command, which is funny. So... Fur Fury... Furist has, a, a tendency of having really bad Caden luck. So... I think we all have to, like, wish him luck so that he doesn't get, like, the worst Caden luck. I think he, like, like minimize it with, like, so many misses. So... Alright, you, you have our luck. Whether that luck is good or bad, I cannot tell you. Whereas T-Pad is going, you know, pretty fine in the psychics and the uh, thing. Is that a four turn? It looked like. Yeah, that's like the best. Hey, I know he saw a protect on Beedrill, but I think that was like perfect Koga for him. It was like one turn lost on Beedrill. Moonblast. Moonblast, no, uh, no special uh, attack. No, 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 it's not minimized, but yeah, that is the... It's that a is protect. The, that's already one turn lost. But hey, hey, at least there's no special attack drop, and at least there's no, uh, you know... Um... What is it? No special attack... Oh, okay, that's a second turn lost, too. Don't minimize either. Oh. Yeah. Again, his average is 12. And so far, we're on, what is it, four? That's four. Yeah. No, five. What's that? Because it's yeah, X special. Five. It's yes. X special. Uh, psychic protect, psychic. Skull yes. protect, skulls. That's five. And at minimum, you need five for uh, Koga. So, hopefully that doesn't happen. Yeah, so, uh, JLF getting his Porygon, now also completing the 50 as well. Uh, he's also going to do shopping. I'm going to assume that he's, he may not be doing the risky strats and just go for the safe strats. I still haven't checked first his items that if he has the X special defenses or not, so I am going to have a look in my, look in his feed. I still cannot tell. I think he has X special defenses, but he just doesn't have the X defend. So, okay, X special gold, that's six. So, this should be seven. Okay, that's seven, so this is eight. You do need to keep a few skulls, I should let you know. Not too many, but you do need a few. 
Unless he hasn't done the menu yet, in which case, that's fine. So that's 9, so if Muck doesn't protect, that is a 10 turn uh, Koga for first. Only losing... Uh... 3 turn? I forget. Yes, I Your do believe that from Earth. I did see the X special defenses. I did not see the X defend. Um, don't know. Because I did see, I I believe I remember, if I remember correctly, the X special defenses is kind of like a grayish color. Because, yeah. right? Because if, if I I actually do not remember what the X the X item colors are. I know X attack is red, and I know God specs green. I know X defense blue. I will fi we'll figure it out. I have a question for you, though, Prices. So, as we see, T Pat's in uh, the, the gym here. Yep. We, we, we go and fly to Viridian. Gym's closed, right? Yep. We, we talk to one, say, hey, let's go talk to, to Oak, right? Yep. Did we ever talk about the gym? To try how to open the gym? It we might be a few text boxes that we talk about the gym, and then it just gets to uh, Professor Oak's uh, love for Mega Evolution for some reason. Hey, do you know this game has Megas? Uh, I do. Uh, if you don't know, uh, spoiler alert. I did not know that the trainer, the second player, could just ignore spinner tiles. Yeah, uh, we do need to talk to game. Oak. No, no, JLF, you do need to talk, you do need to, you need to go to the gym, and then that goes to the Oak cutscene. Just go to, go to, uh, once you're done with Koga, go to Viridian. Then you have a whole cutscene of Oak talking to you, and, that, and that's normal. We're just making the joke that Oak doesn't really talk about the gym. He just talks about his love for Mega Evolution. And whatever that poem that he says is, that just falls flat. Yeah. Also, a little fun thing. You better make sure you talk to that trainer that you did do the mandatory fight. Because if you don't, uh, you're going to have to fight a different trainer. Fun little fact, though. If you do lose to that trainer, uh, it is also the equivalent of skipping that trainer, too. So, you know. I think. I think that's how it works. Yeah, I believe if you like lose to a train, lose to that. Tra I remember if you lose to one of the trainers, you can skip that trainer. But yeah, as we see coming into Giovanni three, or Leah Giovanni. Uh Giovanni. There are two ways of doing it. Uh, there's something called safe strats and risky strats. Uh, safe strats is what Tipat is doing, and I also believe Ferris is also going to be doing, is you're going to summon two players, and you're just going to X special and Scold spam. And ideally, uh, Doug Trio knocks out Rapidash. If it doesn't knock out Rapidash for uh, Tipat, uh, this is actually a chance for Ferris to, you know, catch up and potentially take first place and, you know, uh, have an upset. So there's yeah, another point like, Rapidash does get knocked out, so it's not as slow, but it is still technically slower as the game still needs to kind of take its time and rendering. Obviously doing this 1P is faster, but as people can learn from experience, and I know this experience firsthand, uh it slash and earthquake can crit, and it's always sad when you see it. But now we are approaching endgame, and the interesting thing I want to see is what trainers are each of these runners going to go? Are they going to go for risky strats? Are they going to go for safe strats? This is going to be where things start to get a little bit more interesting, especially for JLF and Forest. These two, are uh, they're like two fights behind each other. I was so hoping that Furious would go for punk strats here. For. Yeah. So Forrest is also going for uh, 2P strats on this fight. There is a fast 2P strat that actually Forrest is is going for. 
which is Psychic Stomp. So if you have high enough special attacks, Psychic plus Stomp, or even just in this case, just Psychic just kills, uh, is a good chance of getting the knockout, which is, you know, really nice. Uh, if your special attack is low like T-Bat is, uh, you probably, yeah, hey, I think he went for like Gold X special instead. Now this fight's done. Because uh, he did, uh, Rapidash was knocked out, you do have to unfortunately waste time menuing here. Does choose not to fully heal the Stami. I probably would have fully healed the Stami in, in, in my personal opinion, as um, you can just, you know, get that menu out the way and you don't have to technically do that menu, but, you know, that's just my opinion. And also having Rapidash lower HP, if he is going for 2p Naomi, does mean that there is a... Does mean that Rapidash is more likely to be targeted by the Kangaskhan, but we'll, 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 we'll worry about that in just a moment. Forest also doing the 2p Shred. We're hoping to see Rapidash also get knocked out by Earthquake as Tifa heads to Rival 5. So Rival 5, fairly simple fight if you are... Regardless of which version you are, uh, you want to X special turn one, you want to X speed turn two. Remember, this game is not like Gen 8 or Gen 9. Dynamic speed is not a feature in this game because this is a Gen 7 game. And then you want to X special afterwards. In Pikachu, in Eevee only, if you are fast enough, you can actually skip the X speed in this fight, as Raichu is slower than Jolteon. But I don't think t -Pet has enough speed to do so. Also, you yeah. would like the Vile Plume second, ideally, instead of Marowak, but you cannot control this. This is because Switch AI is very interesting. That For those who do not know is. how... Oh, sorry. I was just going to say that indeed it is. For those who do not know how Switch AI works in this game, uh, Switch AI works... In the form of the poke one that's going to sent out will be sent out next they will have a look at all of their moves they'll account for super effective and whoever has the strongest move will be sent out next when it's one pokemon it is consistent but when there's two pokemon on the field it will randomly pick which one it wants to target and that will be the pokemon they will send out so in this case there's a 50 50 shot that either marowak or vileplume gets sent out second Jolteon will never get sent out second, or neither Raichu, because their strongest move, I believe, is Thunderbolt, which is, you know, 90 base power, compared to Solar Beam, which in this game is 200 base power. You double it for super effective, that's like 400 base power. I wanted to note that uh, Furious did not get their rapid ass KO'd. Ah, that's unfortunate. That's a bit of a time loss, giving T-Pat a little bit more of a lead. Making him do, do go for safe strats even more like likely, likely, just to guarantee first place. So again, it does depend on like what these runners are trying to do. If they're trying to like you know go for first place, then I would suspect that first was supposed is trying will, should probably go more towards risky. But if you want to like guarantee second place, no problem. I do think that you know playing safe is completely fine. I do think that, again, week one, or like round one, we're going to see more runners, you know, just play it safe, don't do 1p. I don't know who else did 1p strats during Elite Four, I know I did, and uh, I had interesting results when that happened, but... Yeah, I think we've had at least a couple of runners do 1p during Elite Four. But it will be um, interesting so to see... Uh, especially as the races go on, who chooses to do 1P, who chooses to do 2P, as the races get even more tighter and tighter. Oh, they both have Thunder, yeah. Thunder is their strongest move of 110 base power, but Solar Beam, of course, just outranks and destroys them. So, that's why Rapidash, that's why Vileplume gets sent out next, or Marowak, because I believe he has Earthquake. But yeah, T-Pad... Going for the safe Naomi strat of 2p uh, absolutely makes sense because from what I've heard, his special attack is not good. So even if he does get the plus 2, the Hydro Pump might not even be guaranteed. So it does make sense to go for the plus 2. I wouldn't even go for 1p unless I had my Hydro Pump guaranteed. So this is, of course, the first pump of the run. 
of the game from all of our runners. And of course, we do get the first hit. And it looks like it does take it out. Good job. And then this is the next fight. It's pretty simple. You just psychic and goal, psychic, and that's it. Uh, first is dealing with. Sure uh, we have at least one. Well, it uh, does get um, Malwak third, which is nice. Because now you can just psychic instead of scold, saving some super effective text. You know, gotta save the frames. Or, like, the one second text box. And then, yeah, we can just run through this trainer's vision. Doesn't really see that far down. I've learned that the other day. And then we get to see more rock pushing because you can't just run up to a rock. Unlike in, like, other games, you can just run up to a rock. In this game, you have to press A, talk to the rock. And this is not even a Gen 7 thing, by the way. Right, this is just a let's go problem. And also, I believe, a Kanto problem in general. But uh, it is faster to run from Pallet to uh, Viridian. By the way, JLF. So first, going through the badge check. Uh, this fight can be a bit, uh, I believe, cringy as well. Depending on your special attack, you... Yep, yeah, because it has Hypnosis. We love Hypnosis here. Um, but main thing is that depending on your special attack, I think his special, t pad special attack is kind of, well, I, I guess it's good enough to get the 2 hit KO, but yeah, double sleep on hypnosis. A bit annoying, but you know, you just have to deal with that. I thought, oh, that's not good special attack, because that didn't get the knockout. I guess he risked t pad I guess you kind of had to risk it, and you know, that's like, what, four? Three extra turns on just the juggler. That's uh, not great. But at least now you can just spam Thunderbolt and this Lobo dies. Advantages, you get movement, but, you know, menuing is slightly better. But disadvantage is, you know, uh, you miss. So here, we're then going to go into the next trainer skip that we get to do. This is our final trainer skip. There are skips here that you can do. Not in this category, by the way called Bounce Skips, which allows you to skip certain trainers by uh, unmounting and remounting your, your um, Pokemon, but this is any percent no Mount Skips, as Mount Skips do require either specific controllers and, like, very specific setups that uh, none of that we don't want to, like, impose on. So it is the more beginner-friendly category for people to do. And yeah, this next skip requires none of that. Just... Yeah. Unmount and pray that you hug the wall tight enough. Yeah. So first, you know, get uh, doing a two P Naomi. Uh, it would be interest. It would make the race more interesting if T Pat accidentally does hit it. But obviously, we don't wish him for him to hit it. Nice. He didn't hit it. He even gets the skip. And now can continue through the elite four uh, normally. Okay, you see, you see, you see those two trainers that T-Pat was there. I'm conv like, I know the game says you cannot pass between those two trainers, but there is definitely a hole there that the trainer can easily fit through. Like once we see that afterwards. So let's see what Lorelai does. No, not Lorelai. Um, Caroline. Lorelai's later. Well, there's the first hydro pump miss. Uh, for T-Pat, yeah. For T-Pat. Not this tournament. Now, we've seen a lot more, more Hydro Pump misses. And then go back, I believe it's just Thunderbolt? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like there's sometimes you can score, but yeah, Caroline was nice to t at today, which is, you know, not normal. Normally, Caroline is a bit more of a meanie, but for t pat he was nice. She was nice, I should say. I'm getting tired. It's like it's almost like five to eleven. It's like you know I'm trying to keep myself awake, and this race is doing a good job. But you know I'm sometimes will misspeak. Yeah, one more fight in the victory road. Yes, there is plenty of room to run through them, those two trainers. Yeah. Okay. And now T Pat is doing the most interesting thing in the. What are you doing? Oh, you're okay, healing. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. With. And just oh yeah, because you want to heal 
because of power. Now, t pads doing the most exciting part of the speedrun, pushing a rock 20 times. Meanwhile, JLF is uh, fighting Giovanni. I believe he's doing two B strats. No, so. he's doing one B strat. Oh, okay. That's no. Oh. So what does is make this? sense that Pikachu does have the X defense. So for those who do not know what one piece strats for Giovanni is, it is you X defend, you X special, you scold, you hope you don't get crit at all, and let's go. So there's the X special. There's the X special. There's the earthquake. One. No, I mean you can, but yeah, okay. You should just go. Because you would survive anyway. And you would, would not have enough another, but yeah, he's fine right now. Wait, that, that is just all about how I want to walk again. again. Beep, beep, boop, boop, beep, beep, boop, boop. We're all about boys. We're boys. Beep, 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 Coming up, get skip perfectly. Am I still robot? Am I am I still robot voice, or can I stop doing this bit? Okay. I don't know why it happens. <laughs> anyway, uh, final Deep. trainer before Elite Four for T Pat. Uh, yeah. he didn't get the, he did get power whipped, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. I mean, I didn't mute myself, but if you mute me, that's fine. Yeah, so T-Pad did not pick up the four-wheel store. I mean, he didn't have the X special defenses anyway, so he is going for 2P Agatha, as well as 2P every other fight. Yeah, the four-wheel store only matters for 2P Agatha, uh, so he is going absolutely for 2P Agatha, which is gonna be interesting uh first i don't know what he's gonna go for uh he did get i, I what what is happening oh he missed double hydro pump oh that sucks right, yeah i so noticed what... the peeping... yeah i noticed the peeping <clears throat> count hydro pump was at three he missed two yeah so what pokemon is t-pack gonna pull or his i second mean bond? Uh, probably <sighs> Depending on who you are, a fish, a duck, or I don't know. He's gonna get one of those. Dodrio, okay. I was he hoping gets a like he started on Lapras and looked like Lapras was about to come out. I don't I need to ask uh Dynam who has a PhD in Lapras strats. I don't think Eevee can do it. I'm not quite sure. Uh wait, heal. It's so yeah, heal. Back out going to the first Elite Four fight. Uh he technically didn't need to heal, but I don't know how bad his special attack is. He might have to go for plus six versus plus two. T Pat did. Yeah, T Pat did heal uh using the hyper potion. I mean he was already in his bag. So Healing didn't take that much, so yeah, I think it's fine for him to heal. And he is going for plus six, his special attack is not as good. It does mean that you can just, like, Thunderbolt and Scald and kind of live your happy life, but, you know, it's completely fine. You don't have to worry about ranges. Or Hydro Pumps, for that matter. Alright, now finding his final trainer. Uh, this trainer is a bit scary as, um, the Litwick of uh, Litwick. That wrong, po wrong Pokemon, wrong generation. The Licket Tongue has a power whip, so can be a bit scary. You do need to be at least 100 plus HP going into this fight. You can risk it, but actually, wait, is it 100 plus? I don't remember. Like, this is not a 100 plus to thing, but you know, power whip oh, can also avoid it. So. Avoid it. The so but what if you just miss? You know what? What if you? What if you just get lucky and get missed? You know, it's fine. I don't think T-Pad's ever going to need to go for a Hydro Pump ever again, if I'm at least not mistaken. But his special attack is kind of... If, from what I remember, if his special attack is poor, then his uh, 
not gonna knock out the drag most likely not gonna knock out the dragonite so going for 2p yeah. strat does make a ton of sense yeah i don't foresee t pat use another uh not i mean if he's going for t 2p agatha you're not clicking hydro pump hydro pump is only reserved for those who want to go for desperate first is picking up the um forest or so this could be uh but the, 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 this the could be. it's not only one c agatha just one c the elite four if he's picked up x special defenses oh sorry bought x special defenses which i believe he did or maybe Furry is trying to beat the median time so he can get himself plus two, two points instead of one for the being second place, which is also something valid to keep in mind. Right? Maybe he's keeping the time of the medium in mind as we do get more points. So, it will be interesting to see what strats uh, Furry tries to go for. Uh, JLF finally arriving into the victory road and is going to be doing train. Does not choose to uh, box anything first, or unless he's going to box right now. Okay, so he's not boxing, so he's keeping the Rapidash in the party. Which does make sense. You can do two P strats with Rapidash, it just means you're doing one P strats with Agatha because you do not want the wrong Pokemon to spawn against Starmie. So the main reason why, uh, if you're doing 2P Agatha, you need to switch Pokemon is the fact that I was going to say, JLF, if you're going to do that fight 1P, I, I, I would, you know, be res I'll give you mad respects. But you need to have either a bird or a duck uh, in your, you need to either have a bird or a duck in your Pokemon in your party so that you can could, you can manipulate what Pokemon Agatha sends out and specifically you want Weezing to be sent out turn two instead of Gengar because if Gengar gets sent out turn two you're not having a fun time so we're seeing here yeah I think it's if t just plays it 100% safe and he doesn't throw I'm pretty sure he has it in the bag yeah There are things that can go wrong, but I'm pretty certain that he is like on like completely fine to get his three points and continue on. If you are win if you win the group, uh you don't you don't have to worry about um you don't have to worry about what your time is when you're round one. You just have to, you know, win. You only have to you only have to care about your time if you are in second place as you get points depending on your actual final time and depending on if it's higher or lower than the median. Same thing kind of applies if you are in last place. Your timing doesn't really matter because you're going to get no points anyway. So, yeah, fight going pretty well for T-Pat. Forrest is also going to have, you know, a good fight as well here. Uh, the only difference between 1P and 2P in the Bruno fight is simply does the Onyx go for Stealth Rock or for Earthquake. If you have only one Pokemon, it is guaranteed to go for Earthquake. If you have two Pokemon, it can go for Stealth Rock instead. As the AI, while it is, you know, kind of one note, it is a bit smart. We like to see That's Stealth Rock, but Earthquake is, you know, you're, you're high enough HP that it doesn't matter at this point. Yeah. It's definitely not in favor. Yeah, I guess also another cool thing is that, uh, 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 yep. Oh uh, yeah, another cool thing is if you have enough special attack, you can just X special enough times to the Starmie to then scold and then use an elixir to use the sake. Also, this Faint. There's a move called Faint. There was a bounty last year for whoever gets Faint in this fight specifically. Only one person has ever gotten Faint. Ever. So many people say Faint isn't real. That person isn't me, by the way, it's Aspect. So he might tell you that faint's real, but everyone else will tell you that faint isn't real. Oh, oh, there's a list of seven people. Sorry, my bad. I'm lying. I'm a fraud. Don't listen to me. Anyway, uh, here's Oh, uh, Start out 1P on this one, and then 
goes into a GP. So we should see an X special okay. attack here, and then call 2P X speed. Uh, yeah. So fist fight is fine. Uh, cr oh, nice crit. Uh, speaking of critical hits, a uh, fist fight is a bit scary when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, da -da 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 critical hits, as uh, people would know. That you have to hope that for five to for like when you set up. 3x specials, 1x special defense, and 1x spe and 1x speed that you hope you don't get out of any of those turns, crit. Which, uh, let's just say that it happened in a race already, when someone got crit 1p. I don't know who that guy was, but, you know, he probably wasn't happy about it when it happened. Yeah, this fight is pretty much settled for T-Bat. It's... Uh, I guess there's like a psychic range that could happen with Gyarados, but more so the psychic range that's more important and a bit more scary is the psychic range with um, Dragonite. And as we can see coming right up, yeah, the Charizard, yeah, as because of the experience uh, la or lack of experience and the fact that t had to wear candy late on Starmie, uh, Starmie doesn't actually have um the doesn't actually level up until after the Charizard until after Charizard. Yeah, Normally right it levels up before Charizard. Before after Gyarados, but I did not see that special attack. I think that was 136 special. Which I know for a fact that's not guaranteed. It was like 135. It was something. It did get the knockout, so you know it's fine. Uh, let me just double check so I'm not actually spitting out nonsense. Yeah, I think, I think it was 136, so it was a 14 and 16. Something, and now we something, have we're a champ, true something, final something. battle. Yeah. Everyone calls it champion. I call it rival 6. It's essentially the same difference. There is no difference between, rival, between the two, but you know, I like calling it rival 6 instead just to annoy some people. So now, T-Pat is on champion. The fight is also in 2P extremely safe. Ideally, you want... Because T-Pat does have the Dodrio, he ideally wants to see Air Slash on the Dodrio turn 1. I don't think there's any problems if it gets the knockout. I don't remember. I don't actually know or remember if, if Pidgeot... Because again, I don't really do 2P strats myself. I just do it. Uh, I think I we do want the, the Dodrio to get... Oh no, Dodrio is full healed, never mind. So we do want to see Dodrio to get hit by the Air Slash. I don't think we wanted to see it get knocked out. If I'm not mistaken. But... I think it's fine if it gets knocked out. Because you do want to be... Well, oh, we're about to find out if being knocked out bad. Because you need yeah, an extra I... here. Yeah, you need to be plus two. Plus four. Yeah, this gets us a plus four right here, and then we just okay, start okay. going. I mean, that could have been scary if you got crit, but, you know, it's fine. Like, this is also another fight that, if you get crit, it is extremely scary. Also, because uh, T-Pat used Thunderbolt on plus four Pidgeot, it does mean that he has to be a bit careful not to accidentally uh, Psychic the... Oh, he's going for plus four! Yeah. Is that I think enough? This fight calls... Yeah, I think this fight calls for plus four. I think it. I think. Because I know in Pikachu you have to go. You go for plus six. I think I guess this calls that. of the uh, Jolteon is dead. Yeah. Okay. Just out of okay. Just out of curiosity, because you know. But you do have to be a little bit careful. Uh, you can if you are just in non-thinking mode, just accidentally psychic the Slowbro. Uh, if you yeah, you if you, you are know. able to psychic the Pidgeot. But you don't actually have to worry, because you run out of PP before that happens. Like I said, until we see Thunderbolt on... Until we see Slowbro get knocked out, the run is still technically not over, but it has to be a big misclick right now. And we see Thunderbolt and Slowbro, so that is GG's to Thomas Patrick. 
Yeah, I think this is about a low 303 time for him. Yeah. GG to, t to t -bat. As we have Furious, Lance, and Geo. On Lance as well, does go for fight, does tower. get the knockout, so that's uh, pretty good. So he's now just one more fight ready, and JLF not that far behind from everyone else. Like, despite having, like, you know, the slower PB of them. Oh! Oh, he's going for 1P! Let's go! Let's do it! No, that's hype. No, I'm sorry. No, that's hype. He, like, even though he's behind, he is going for one piece strats. Let's go. And I believe this is technically still PB pace for him. So you know what? I think so. Let's do it. Go for he's it. He's doing it for the content. I'm with him. Like, I I am also someone who does one piece strats because I want to do one piece strats. And so I believe, I believe. Uh, the first two fights aren't as different from one piece strats compared to two piece strats. But by the time we get to... uh. Uh, not Laurel, uh, Agatha, things start to get a little bit different and a little bit more risky. The advantages of not having uh, a second Pokemon is, of course, the fact that you do not see... Oop. Don't want to fight. You want to use X specials. There we go. We do not see any, like, experience text or level ups or in the Hall of Fame. We do not see another Pokemon at all. So, yeah. So that's the th so that's the thing about this fight. Oh, nice two P layout. So yeah, Forest right now. Oh yeah, we there's a Mega Pidgey by the way. That's Jesus Bird. So Air Slash. And it's unfortunate for Forest that he got the Air Slash on the uh the on the star on the star because now you have to kind of use moves on Rapidash. But you know what? That's fine. Yeah. So. T-Pat does get, apparently, according to, to Sandy, 3.03.30 on race time, but on here it just says 3.03.17, so we will ask him whenever he wants to join his act his final time on his live split. But yeah, but apparently race time is correct, so his time it should be written 3.03.30, not 3.03.17. Just, just everyone to let them know. The GLF is through Lorelei. Yeah. Um, yes. Not to go into Bruno. What's that? One X bed and then. Five. Yeah, one X special, spam psychic, have fun. And Forrest has, like, you know, two more fights, two more Pokemon, I believe. No, three more Pokemon. I'm sorry. So you just spam. Yeah, at this point, you just spam psychic, spam stomp, and you kind of just win from there. Nothing really crazy to go for it. I'm really, I'm going to suggest to JLF, simply put, save before Agatha, and from personal experience, save before Lance. Ah, oh. uh, you didn't need to hyper potion, but you know, he's just, you know, playing it safe. Oh, no, 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 he's scared of faint. Oh, that's true. I don't know if that was faint range, but yeah. I don't know about JLF got faint once. That that's why okay, he's scared. That that's enough. Once you know what? Enough. That's fair. you know what? That is one hundred percent respectable. That makes and, sense. And uh, Furious taking down champion and becoming oh, yeah. champion he's himself. Forest, everyone, I think that's like what well, uh, I can't tell anymore. I think it's like a low three oh, either high three oh six or low three oh seven. It's gonna be a. I 306. Yeah, I think it's high 306. No, no, low 307. Low 307. I think that okay. might be one of the better times for pot two, I believe. So he might be in the two point three point no sorry, two point threshold for uh round two. Again, does depend on next rounds does depend on next round's uh thing, which will actually happen in about fifteen minutes on PSR two. So when we are done here. We will be raiding over to PSR 2 for the next race after this. Or at least I believe it's going to happen in the next race after. It should happen in it, PSR 2. It's going to happen after. Yes, it's going to happen on first. this channel, if I'm not mistaken. I, it's not going to happen on this race. channel simply because I don't think we have enough time to do the tech and everything, but it'll probably happen. I, I believe know. it will happen so, on PSR 2 v 2. But anyway, it's going to happen tonight. 
again, if any of the runners want to, you know, join in and, you know, talk about their run and their, and their thing, as we do see JLF going for 1P Agatha and going for Let's 1P do it. the entire time. Let's, do it. Let's see this happen. Please, Agatha, do not be a pain. I was gonna say something else, but you know what? You can, you guys can put, you can, you guys can fulfill the rest of the words if you want. So, how does one P strat work? One P strat is relatively is relatively simple but scary. Turn one, you X special, and depending on what happens, uh, things will happen. So we gain glare paralysis. Okay, so now we go for the X speed, and let's see what happens after this turn. Crunch. Super effective, but no defense drop. That is completely fine. You just now Look, use the force score. score, heal with the full, get rid of the paralysis, and now you get crunched again. That's completely fine. Now you just psych. Yeah, you just psychic spam. You are free to go. That is a fine fight. If he really wants to be risky, there are some Pokemon that you can technically hydro pump, but you really probably don't want to risk any of those hydro pumps. Just spam psychic and you're good to go because if you miss, yeah, dead. But yes, this is definitely huge PB pace for JLF. Just so people are aware, his PB before is a 520, a 325. No, sorry, 325. 325. So this is still respectable pace for him. I believe he just learned this game for this tournament. So huge respectable PB pace for him. PB if it if it goes over distance. But the next fight, the next fight is, again, the scary one. If my, prof if my profile picture gets updated, you will know why afterwards, but... The next fight can be... Nerve-wracking. He can choose the 2P, but I think he's just, like, fully com Like me, he'll be fully committed to, like, doing the 1P strats, which... But very carefully... Make sure you ether the right move. Oh, he still has the max elixir. So even if he fudges, yeah, okay. You know what? No, he's fine. Like he's so, good. if you have the ether and not the max elixir, you have to be extremely careful because if you ether the wrong move, your run is over. That's it, your run's dead. You do not have Psychics, you cannot knock out the Dragonite, you cannot knock out anything. Your run is just dead. Like, even if you somehow manage to get past Lance, I do not know how you're going to get past the, uh, Vile Plume. So, yeah, turn yeah, 1, the one p threat. Turn 1, X Special Defense. Then you X Speed, and then you X Special three times. Hope to God this thing decides not to Hyper Beam crit you. So one. Using pump right now. Using pump, that's fine. Two. For being and that's hyper beam, not a crit. That's that's three. If you just X specials and spam psychic, you should be good. Yep, that was a free turn, so we just go. <laughs> we just go. We just fight and we just hope we hit the Dragonite. That is the last final scary thing that can happen. If we do not hit the Dragonite range. So at level 53, we will be seeing what the special attack of the Stami is. And depending on the special attack, we want to be guaranteed it needs to be 140 plus. That is the only We're guarantee of the see. special attack. So we're going to see the level up here. We're hoping to see 140 or higher. Oh, 30. no! That's 130. That's a 10 and 16. Well, let's hope. That, 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 that's, uh, it's still favored. You just have to hit it. Come on. Yeah, it. yeah let's it. go! Now we just have the final champion fight, which again, I would highly recommend if he's listening to heal plus save. 
And if you do, I believe like what, 317 is like what people are predicting that this time will end up being? I think so. Well, we'll see by the time we get to the final split. So medicine, we go heal. No, he's committed to one beat. You're not saving. You save right here, right now. No, he's okay. Saving. He's, just, he's okay. going to camp. Uh, this is a cutscene. Cut cut is scene. he watching the cutscene for a meme? You know, you could skip this, right? Okay, I guess we're gonna. I guess we're okay. just gonna watch the cutscene. You know what? Fine. Well, this is now content. For the content, people, let's do it. This is now officially cutscene percent. No, it's not, but you know what, shush. So, yeah, this is now the final the final fight. We, again, similar to the Cedra, we do not want to see a crit. We want to what? Special X, defense? Special defend. X speed. And I believe because the special attack is very poor, you do need to use at least two X specials here. And then one more at the Vile Plume. Yeah, that's Bob Blue should go for Solar Beam. Yeah, it should. Hopefully. So, S slash 1, that's a decent amount of damage. Uh, X speed. You do live one more. So, here's the first X special. S slash. Okay, okay, we're good. Now we just Hyper Potion okay. because we don't have Quick yep. Attack. And also, we just die to X S slash anyway. There we go. One more, and we are good to go. We can just go. Yeah. Just go. So just... here, okay. You don't know play it safe. Fine. That's completely fair. You want to play it safe. You do not want to risk. Um, sludge. Oh, they're doing all the. All oh, the... I mean that's also okay. fair. You can also just okay. do all the X specials and not risk Fire Plume doing anything. Uh, funny. That's also fine too. It's a bit faster to go on the Vile Plume, but you know what? It's completely fine and fan justified just to, you know, set up on the Pidgeot instead. But now you can just spam Psychic, and as long as, and I know he has a Turbo Controller. Yeah, don't accidentally do not hit a spam on psychic, psychic on Slowbro. Slowbro. Please. I've done it before. It, it, it you just, you just, uh. At best, you you barely live. At worst, uh, you die and uh, you have to start from lands. So just whatever you do, do not psychic a slow bro. If for those who do not know, a uh, turbo a turbo controller is essentially a controller that allows you to spam one button, uh, so that you don't have to mash set button because who wants to mash the A button for like three hours straight? Let's be honest. So, yeah, just have not. some advantages, but if you accidentally press it a little bit too many times... Yeah, it's there okay, thank you. There, there we go! go. This is 316, actually. For... Yeah, yeah my is 317. Alright, yeah, it might be... It depends on what race time says, because this time yeah. our timing got a little bit off when it comes to on-stream compared to... Uh, everyone else, but G, G's, G, G's, G, G, Huge PB. Yeah, huge. I mean, that, well, from three eight seventeen to three twenty five. That's like what an eight minute PB. That is yes. impre That is definitely an impressive improvement. Absolutely something to be respected for. And you know, he'll, he's only gonna get better from here. You know, he's made some mistakes. He's hit a few trainers, but you know what? It's only, it's only gonna get better from here. Yeah, and the one C this entire uh, Elite Four like that. And yeah, 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 no, dude, yeah, no. That's just swag. the fact that he chooses to go for one P. The entirety of Elite Four that none of our two runners decided to go for. Just saying. I mean, you can defend yourselves now, T Pan first, if you want to. But you know, the fact that he went for it and you didn't. Just saying. <laughs> you know what? I I will accept that one. Um, yeah, GGs to JLF and GGs to. Fury for the great race. That was a fun one, by the way. That was a fun one to be a part of, uh, especially with Fury kind of pushing me the whole way through the mid game. So that was a really, really fun race. Uh, I know he got a little bit unlucky on uh, J and J three, 
uh, which kind of spoiled some of the fun into the late game, but it kept me on my toes, that's for sure, all all day. Yeah, uh, GG to you and oh. T Fat, I got a question for you. Yeah. Okay. If you were not Modest Attack Eevee, why did you think you're a Modest Attack Eevee? Yeah, uh, funny enough, I actually had no problems with my special attack that whole run. Uh, everything that could have been a range I hit in terms of the special attack. But the uh, the the literal zero neutral attack ended up giving me way more headaches. Uh, and we should have really learned it right from the get-go because that first roll I had on rival was a low roll. So it looked like it was minus attack. And I'm like, oh, minus attack, here we go. And... I, I low rolled the Metapod in the forest. I low rolled the Bell Sprout in Moon, and I continued to struggle with just having minimum attack. Um, even though I had minus special attack, I you could have told me that that this EV was bold instead of impish, and I would have believed you more. Uh, it is very weird, but I I will continue to complain that my attack was worse than my special attack. Just because I had I, I I saw more problems and lost more turns through the run because of the minus attack or <laughs> minus attack zero attack uh, compared to the minus special attack. Yeah, so I I mean I, when I saw your run, it's like nothing really went badly wrong with I don't think your run entirely. I mean, obviously you had like the you thought you had minus attack instead of like minus special but now that you you know you won your first race how confident do you feel like going into like the next rounds knowing that you're going to be fighting against someone who has also won their race yeah uh i'm actually feeling really confident um of course i had to like look it up uh already comparing like oh where's this time stack up to everybody else's uh and i saw it was second fastest uh only to say in in this first round uh and that with this ev uh, i think really uh says a lot about how sharp I've been. Um, I know 303 for my standards seems very mediocre, uh, but that with the most mediocre EV just proves that this is probably the minimum time my competitors can expect from me. Uh, and it's all uphill from there. And thinking of it that way, uh, I think puts the pressure on everybody else and might take a little pressure off of me. Because like when I'm racing, I I usually feel a lot of pressure. <laughs> I'm usually like so nervous and so sweaty. So to just get myself this round one confidence, uh, all the safe strats, no attack, minus special attack, can still lay down a 303 just because of my sharp play style. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling super confident. And so who's the one person you do not want to face next round? I would say, and I'm glad... Obviously, I we have one more won't. race to go, so... Obviously, yeah, yeah. the final race that's happening in a few minutes might, you know, uh, change the, things. The answer is definitely Saiyan. Uh, I think Saiyan is also playing as sharp as anybody in the field right now. Um, and they've proven that, obviously, they've got they've got the sub-3, um, their best time to prove it. They got the 301 and the, and the top time in round one. Uh, I think Saiyan's probably the person to beat. I know everybody is going to say plot armor Echi is going to come back out and... Honestly, that that does make me a bit nervous. Um, and Amber is always a big threat too. Uh, just anybody on their best day can win the whole tournament. Uh, so it's just more about like making your mediocre days count. Uh, but yeah, I think I think in putting it that way, I think Saiyan is is super scary right now. And if we have no one else who wants to comment or talk about their race, I guess we can. Oh no! Okay. Bye. Thank you. First of all, yeah, good game. You know, is you know very Angela. close between the two of you. Yeah, I mean, it was a fun run in Tilt Tower. I mean, I was I was obviously behind T Pad a bit, but not by that much. Um, so it was still like pretty fun until then. And then yeah, Tower Change just didn't really cooperate. And then from then on, it was like I was significantly far ahead. Um, of uh, JLF, but I was significantly far behind of T-Pad, so it was like I I just played safe basically from then on until just so I could get like um the potential two points, I guess, because I think this time should be enough for that. And yeah, I, okay. So I do wonder if 
you know, Jesse and James 3 decided to go, you know, a bit fine and you were a little bit closer. Would you have considered going for 1 p.m. more riskier strats or... It would depend on... Hit? In the end, probably not because I think t was still... I still, I think he had enough of a lead that it wouldn't have mattered too much. Um, so, and I mean, my like, I still had other things that went pretty wrong afterwards. Like my Route 17 wasn't great. I had to wait a bit for Pony. And then my Caroline like lost me probably over half a minute on on VR. Um, so probably wouldn't yeah, have. In, in regards to that, like I was, I was keeping that in the back of my head, uh, but you obviously you don't have to decide until you make that shop in Saffron. And at the moment when we were going into tower, I mean, we were neck and neck. There was just, there was just absolutely nothing between us. Uh, and in that moment, it's just like, all right, we're just going to, you know, keep throwing it at the wall. And I had no indication that I was going to play it safe, but then I saw you had that super messy J and J. Uh, and then from there it was about calculating how far ahead am I at, am I at, and I think it was about three minutes or in that wheelhouse. And that's like more than enough margin where it's like, yeah, we can just, you know, play the safe, tap it in. And I just know from my time and just watching my splits that I was going to be pretty comfortably in the 303s barring some crazy things, though. I did have a I did have a funny misclick <laughs> on, uh, uh, gosh, what's his name? Uh, Dawson, where... I just I missed the second input and of course I missed an extra hydro pump. So like things like that you also want to take into consideration when you're kind of calculating that margin of how much can I, you know, how how far how far ahead do I have to be in order to play it hundred percent safe and, and still win? And in three minutes is pretty comfortably in that uh in that window. Yeah. I mean when I was I basically decided my shop like after Archer. Because at that point I was like three oh five pace. Um, even with a safe thing, a uh, safe uh, end game. So I think it was like, it was the right like choice because at that point, even with the safe um, shop and some things going wrong, I would have been fine for like the two points. Um, so yeah. So do you think we're gonna be seeing any risk going forward? Any risky strats from the two of you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> like I, th I think. Uh... I think it, this this round might still be the exception because we saw a lot of this last year where uh, some of the races weren't super balanced. But I think with the with the Swiss rounds heading into the next round, I think the competition is going to be so so tight uh, that I think we'll see a lot less uh, safe plays uh, unless something really extraordinary happen happens. But I'm pretty much anticipating that if I'm behind, I'm going to be playing risky. And if I'm not ahead by enough, I'll also be playing risky. And I can see that happening in the next round. I mean, it's entirely fair that, like, Etchy and I get matched up. And at that point, like, everything's out the window. Unless I mean, he wants to drop, like, get... a 259, like, last time, then then there's nothing you can do about that. You can also get the time zone race, which does exist if in, 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 in you know, uh, three-point bracket. If Aspect and... Uh... Saying gets paired up, whoever gets the third pairing is going to have a fun time figuring out what time zone is going to be. <laughs> but yeah, if anyone else has anything to say, we can then talk about the final race of round one. Yes, that and is. It's supposed yes. to be happening uh, as of, if I can do math, four minutes ago. Yeah, it just went live on. And it just, oh, went, it and it just went live. So. Everyone here, who do you think is gonna take the take the race, and if so, by how much? By so what difference? The real question is: Is Randall playing Pika or Evie? Because he's been burning it, burning it lately on Evie, almost getting a sub three. I yeah. So Randall's up there. Pokétax is also up there. I I, I don't know, and I'm. Um, Ready to see what Burner's got to bring to the table as well. Well, we won't be wait well to figure out what question of which version Randall's running, we won't be wasting too much of your time. We're gonna pack it up so that we can then see the next race. Uh I've been Crisosaurus, Mocha Jones have been joining us in commentary, and I thank you for your 
par partners, thank you for being here during this time. Uh, we want to give a huge congratulations to, of course, TPAT for winning his race first, becoming second, and JLF, while losing, does get himself a new PB, which, in the end of the day, that's the bigger W out of winning yes, this it race. Is. Let's, be, let's be completely honest here. So, yeah, uh, I thank you all, and we shall see you next time. Enjoy the final race of the final round. The final race of this round.